Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku was the legacy of All Might Part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content and live a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story The Hinakami from Wattpad. So let's start the video. Third POV. Izuka Midoriya was your average years old child in all sense but one thing was different for him that wasn't different for everyone else. Izuka Midoriya was quirkless unlike everyone else and that made him different from everyone else so much even though it should have been a minor detail in this world but it wasn't. As such, at the age of four when he was declared quirkless, he was told he was worthless by everyone and started to receive ill treatment from everyone around him. Even Inko Midoriya who was his mother that was meant to love him started to treat him more and more like glass but that was fine in Izuku's mind since she didn't physically harm him. Izuku could vividly remember the day he was declared quirkless where the doctor told him his dreams were never going to happen but that wasn't the worst part of that day. No, the worst part of that day was when his mother walked into his room and just apologized to him when he needed words of encouragement instead of denial. However, Fate seems to work in wonderful ways as Izuka Midoriya was walking through a city he was in one day than he normally wasn't in. The reason he was there was because his school was on a short break for the week and his mother had taken him with her to work during that week since she didn't want a babysitter to take care of him which Izuku had some idea on why since he was quirkless and most people didn't treat him like a human at all. However, this decision would lead to many changes going on in this world as it was the fateful day that the number one pro hero would engage in battle against a very powerful villain known as All for One. Their battle started and shook the entire city as sirens were going off as people were evacuating. Izuku though ran deeper into the city to try and find his mother and minutes later he found someone else instead. The person he found was none other than All Might himself, but something was wrong as Izuku ran up to the man, he could see All Might covered in beeld, All Might. Are you okay? Izuku asked as he tried to wake the man up. Then he heard a groan from the man as he woke up. What who are you? He asked and Izuku told him his name and explained that he found him in an alley as the sirens were going off. All Might looked at his body and realized how bad his wounds were. I am not going to survive this am I, he thought as he looked at the boy who was afraid but yet had eyes of determination as he was trying to help All Might survive. This boy he reminds me of myself and my All Might thought as he leaned towards the boy and spoke up. Young man what are your dreams for the future? All Might asked and Izuka froze but got back to work on trying to stop the bleeding. I, I want to be a hero even though everyone tells me I should just give up. I want to make a better society that doesn't treat people like me like trash, as worthless, as wastes of space I want to save people with a smile on my face and make them feel that even if I am against great odds that I will do everything I can do even if it looks horrible. That they can have hope for a better tomorrow. Izuku said as he kept working on all might wounds even though they were disturbing and huge. Izuku was thankful for all of the medical knowledge he learned to care for his own wounds due to everyone using their quirks on him. Though he didn't notice All Might's eyes widen when he heard this from the boy in front of him. Oh what is your quirk young man? All Might asked and the next words that he heard from the boy in front of him made it feel as if fate determined this meeting to him. As he learned that Izuka Midoriya was quirkless yet he held so much determination. Is this fate MSTR? To be given someone that I think is so much like me yet so much like you a quirkless person just like me yet they hold so much determination and willpower to strive to do good in this quirked world. I wonder if I would have become a parent figure for him as you became for me but I won't be here forgive me Izuku Midoriya, all might thought as he called out to the boy. Izuku forgive me for this as I give you a blessing but also a curse. Hate me if you will or thank me if you will. The decision is yours but I can't let it die with me you need to train your body up as much as you can before using it. All Might said as he took some of his BLD and placed it into Izuku Midoriya's mouth and made him swallow it. Izuku was freaked out and tried asking what he did but All Might told him to run and trust in the predecessors to help him in his darkest times. Izuku was confused until the city started to shake and All Might stood up and jumped away as Izuku could hear the battle start again. He's still fighting the villain but what did he mean a blessing but a curse? Izuku thought as he turned around and ran as far as he could. 
About minutes later he found his mother who grabbed him and they ran for it as part of the city was destroyed. It's been several months since that day and Izuku still didn't understand what All Might had meant with his last statement but there was one thing that Izuku did understand of it. Whatever All Might had done to him required Izuku to train his body for it to work. As such, without his mother really knowing about it he started to physically train via different methods such as running and lifting weights he bought with his allowance which he hid in his room. Izuku also started doing a set of routines to start building his body up. Izuku also tried to find any information on All Might after that day but the only thing that people were allowed to know was that All Might was going on a long-term mission that required his movements to be hidden or the villain organization he was hunting down would go deep into hiding to not be defeated. However, Izuku Midoriya wasn't a clueless child. No, he was a quirkless child that was forced to survive in a cold and harsh world. Izuka knew several things that happened that day. One was that All Might was seriously injured and two he was fighting a villain that could kill him. Izuka didn't buy into the lie that they were putting out in the media that he was going on a long-term mission. No, he knew All Might was either dead or in critical condition in the hospital which was being kept under wraps to prevent chaos and someone from attempting to finish the job. Izuku indeed was smarter because he had to learn far more on his own which lead him to be ahead of everyone else since teachers would sabotage his learning in school by providing him wrong information. As such, he always needed to learn on his own and read between the lines to survive against the teachers that wished him ill will or tried to sabotage his schooling. He also needed to be smart to survive against his fellow classmates since they would always harm him with their quirks. As such, Izuku learned a lot of medical knowledge and human anatomy so he could better know where to let the hits land so there was less damage in less important areas. This is why he knew what was put in the media was a complete lie so Izuku was preparing himself to figure out whatever All Might gave him which he believed may be a quirk since it was the only thing that would make sense even though it defied all no logic nor did he understand how it would work expect the BLD portion. However, on the TH month since meeting All Might he finally understood some of what All Might had done that day and his theory was correct. Izuku Midoriya had activated the quirk he had inside of himself now as. Green arcs of lighting were going over his body parts that he had it on and was shifting it to but it was downright painful to use the quirk that he had to quickly shut it off in fear of destroying his body. I understand why he said to train my body because if I threw a punch or tried to move then I likely would have died most likely Izuku thought as he laid on his bed as his entire body was sore. The quirk he now had was too powerful for him to actively use as it stood so Izuku knew he needed to train his body more but there was one thing he could do. Izuku decided to show it to his mother and claim he had just awakened a quirk inside of himself which wasn't a complete lie. It was just leaving out a massive amount of information that he knew where it truly came from. When his mother saw it she was so thrilled that her child had finally gotten a quirk that she agreed that they needed to go register it the next day. She asked if he had a name for it but before he could even start thinking of a name he had one somehow in his mind. He opens his mouth and speaks out, I want to call it energy manipulation since it feels like I am pulling from a pool of energy to manipulate it so I might find more tricks to it in the future. Izuka said not knowing where that entire statement came from but just said it as it appeared in his mind. How did that come in my mind I know All Might said something about trusting the predecessors but that seems a bit ridiculous that the past users can interact if they aren't around. Maybe could it be that the quirk somehow holds memories of the past users and feeds it to the new user? Izuka thought but soon put it out of his mind since he had more important things to figure out right now since he needed to start getting more training under his belt since he believed his mother would be more supportive of his training. This way he wouldn't need to hide his training anymore from her since she would always stop him from joining a dojo or other training places since she said he was too vulnerable for places like that. Izuka knew that she shouldn't be treating him like glass but left it alone since it was better for him to keep his mouth shut and have a place to call home than none at all. Izuku again wasn't stupid and he read the online forums that other quirkless people have created about their lives and the treatment they received. Izuku knew his mother could be physically abusive with him based on the treatment the others received or worse she could kick him out. Izuku was content to receive the physical abuse he gets from his classmates and the neglect from the teachers instead of getting it from his mother as well. 
The next day came and soon they registered the quirk on the documents that they needed to and turned it into the quirk registration office which didn't raise any suspicions since Izuku was only years old now and quirks have come in late for some people before as well. The latest a quirk had come in that Izuku had found was for a year old in the United States. They did require him to see a quirk doctor so that he could get help to better understand it and that is what they did that same day since the office had a quirk doctor on staff. The doctor asked Izuku to turn the quirk on and he did it was he turned the quirk on in his arm but soon turned it off. The doctor asked why he turned it off and Izuku explained that it hurt to keep it on after so long that it felt like there was too much energy. The doctor asked Izuku some questions about his physical condition and Izuku explained he had been doing workouts like sit-ups, running, and other things since he wanted to be physically fit. The doctor nodded his head and asked Izuku to try and envision the power he had inside of himself. Izuku described it as a sun that was filled with overwhelming energy that felt as if it could consume him and was him away. The doctor asked him to take a portion of the energy but not everything and distribute it across his entire body since he was only putting it in one place like last time. The doctor described it as a pipe system that had too much pressure built up that would burst so instead of diverting it all to one place he was letting the pressure of the power go through his entire body muscles fibers and bones so that the pressure didn't build up in one place. Soon Izuku did as he was told and was able to control a small sliver of the energy as it arced across his body. It was still painful but not to the degree that it was before and he explained this to the doctor. From what I can gather your physical condition is a requirement. You need to work out a lot more and put muscles on. I suggest joining dojos and other gyms to help build muscles up since it appears to be a requirement if you use the energy to enhance your body. Said the doctor and Inko nodded her head and said she would look into places for him to join. Soon they left the doctor's office at the Quirk Registry building and went home however it seems fate always has to screw Izuku over as several weeks later a knock came on the door that Izuku wasn't expecting. 33rd POV It had been several weeks since Izuku Midoriya and Inko Midoriya had gone to the Quirk doctor and had his Quirk register with the government but Izuku wasn't prepared for what was going to be coming to his door. Izuku thought the day would be normal like every other day where he works out in his room before he goes out on a run for a while. However, when he was getting ready to start his day on that Saturday morning a knock came on the door early in the day. Izuku's mother went to get it and she was surprised to see who was at the front door. It was none other than Sir Night Eye the sidekick of All Might. She invited him in and called for Izuku to come to greet the guest. Izuka did so and was shocked to see who it was and his mind went into overdrive as he wondered if All Might was better and had sent Sir Night Eye to talk to him. Sir Night Eye took the tea that Inko had offered him and spoke soon after. Ma'am, I am here in regard to a case that happened about months ago in the city you work in. As you know I work for All Might as his sidekick and I am here to talk to your son that might have seen something since he was in the area where the event happened. As such, I would like to speak to your son alone for some moments to see if he knows anything if that is all right with you. Sir Night I asked and Inko looked at her son before nodding her head to Sir Night I. She soon left the room and Sir Night I looked at Izuku as he started to ask the questions. I am sure you know what I am here to talk about since I have video of you leaving the area where All Might was at. Something was taken from All Might that I am tracking down to ensure it gets provided to a better suited individual if you know what I mean. Sir Knight I said and Izu Mind provided several options and theories but the way that Sir Knight I talked implied that All Might likely didn't know Sir Knight I was here since All Might had given the quirk to Izuku with nothing that implied it was meant for anyone else. No, All Might implied that he didn't want the quirk dying with him so he passed it on so he did that. Unless All Might came asking for it back then Izuku had no plans of giving it up since it would help him achieve his dreams of becoming a hero and saving people. As such, Izuku chose to play dumb. Sir, I don't know what you mean or are getting at. Izuku said and Sir Knight I frowned a bit. Listen here what you were given is. Meant to be a symbol and not a plaything so it doesn't seem fit for someone like yourself to keep a hold of what you were given. You can either agree to hand it over to someone I find more suitable to become the next vessel or I can take harsher measures. The choice is yours so decide now. Sir Knight I said and that statement rubbed Izuku completely wrong. Does he mean someone quirkless shouldn't hold this power? It seems this man is just like all other people that look down on quirkless people. 
Even though I have a quirk the staff and students at my school haven't treated me any better since no one would believe me when I said I had a quirk since I refused to illegally use my quirk. Izuku thought as he gritted his teeth. Once again, I have no idea what you are talking about. I was under the impression you were asking for information about a case I must have witnessed but it seems you're here implying I stole something instead. You do realize this is illegal since you lied to my mother and started interrogation of a minor without legal representation or their guardian since you lied to the said guardian to do t his illegal interrogation. Izuku said and Sir Knight I frowned even more as he looked at Izuku. He then stood up and told Izuku that he chooses to take the rough method instead. Soon Inko came back into the room with a frown on her face that confused Izuku until she spoke. Izuku, this hero says you stole something from All Might. What did you do and if you did it then you need to hand it over right now. Inko said with a tone which left Izu stunned as he looked at Sir Knight Ai who had a smirk on his face. Oh he is really going to smear my name, isn't he? I am highly doubtful All Might approved of this. Izuku thought as he clenched his hands. Mother I don't know what he is implying I stole. He's never even told me what I've stolen so how would I know if I had it or not which I don't. You had found me that day as well and would have known if I had something that didn't belong to me so how could you believe him? Izuku asked as he looked at his mother who huffed as she asked Sir Knight I what exactly did her son steal. Sir Knight I looked trapped for a few moments before he looked at her with a small smile. Ma'am to be honest with you. Your son somehow stole All Might's quirk. That is the reason All Might hadn't made public appearances lately though I request you keep silent about this since it would cause chaos if it got out. Somehow your son was able to take his quirk and I am here trying to get your son to return it to us. Sir Knight I said as he bowed his head and Izuku was stunned since that was complete bullshit and lies. Izuku now knew that All Might had no knowledge of this conversation going on nor likely knew Sir Knight I was even here either since Izuku didn't steal anything. Inko though was shocked and stunned until she remembered her son recently awoke in a quirk. She explained as such to Sir Knight I who nodded his head and said that it was indeed All Might's quirk. Izuku I don't know how you did it but you will return the number one hero's quirk right this instant. Inko yelled at him and Izuku shrunk in on himself since his mother has never been like this to him. He was afraid that she was going to hit him. I didn't steal anything. As such, there is nothing to return. Izuku said out loud with a bit more tone than he expected of himself which made things worse as Inko slapped him across the face which stunned Izuku and stunned Inko as well but she snapped out of it. I am sorry I hit you son but go to your room. Until you decided to return what you stole which I still don't understand how you did it then you will stay in your room. I will figure out what to do about your school as well. Inko said and Izuku retreated to his room in silence but looked at Sir Knight I one more time who looked a bit disturbed as he watched a child be hit in front of him but the man just clenched his hands and ignored Izuku as he spoke to Inko. Izuku could hear them from his room since it was close enough and he left his door slightly open as well. He heard them talk about trying to figure a way out to force Izuku to hand the quirk over one way or another. Inko talked about how Izuku always wanted to be a hero and Sir Enitai said that Izuku must have been greedy and decided to take the quirk for his own somehow so he could try to live out his dreams even though his school records would never allow him to. I see your son has created a lot of issues at school which would end up preventing him from getting into most prestigious schools like UA anyway. Sir Knight I said and Inko said she knew. He always claimed that he never did any of it and that they were always putting the blame on him. I had believed him but it turns out my son was nothing but a lie and a thief all of this time. I regret so much now Inko said and those words broke Izuku's heart. Sir Knight I told her that he would return in a few days to see if Izuku had come to his senses on giving the quirk up and she said he would not be going to school for a while until he agreed to give it up. Later that night Inko went to Izuku's room and told him that he wouldn't be fed dinner since he decided to be a thief. She told him to think of it as punishment for all of the lies he has told her over the years of never starting things at school. Izuku tried to tell her that he didn't steal anything but she ended up smacking him again. It was at that time that Izuku knew that his mother stopped caring for him and it was all due to Sir Knight I framing him. All Might I truly hope you have nothing to do with this please don't be like everyone else. I want to save people with a smile. Izuku thought as he went to sleep that night but he had something happen to him that he didn't expect to happen. 
When he went to sleep he woke up in another place that he didn't know of. The place was a dark void with ruins all around him. As Azuku looked around he heard a voice call out to him and he headed off in that direction to find the voice and he soon did as he found a group of people waiting for him. Hello, Izuku Midoriya or should we say the ninth user of One for All. We see you have found yourself in a sticky situation and we are here to help you, said one of the people and Izuku was downright confused about what was going on. 33rd POV Izuka Midoriya went to bed that night starving because even though he didn't eat dinner he was far hungrier than just missing one meal due to the fact that the bullies at school stole his lunch. Izuku cried quite a bit but stifled his tears since he refused to admit he stole anything because All Might had willing given him the quirk and he didn't want to lose his chance at his dreams to become a hero. He wanted to become the number one hero but he didn't really care about that in the grand scheme of things when he would rather become a hero just to save people and make them feel safe. As Izuku slept he ended up waking up in a dark void that confused him since he didn't know where he was. Soon he heard a voice call out for him so he followed the voice and soon found the location of the voice which revealed to be from multiple people calling out to him. Hello, Izuku Midoriya or should we say the ninth user of One for All. We see you have found yourself in a sticky situation and we are here to help you, said one of the people and Izuku was downright confused about what was going on. Soon a lady walked up to him and hugged him as she apologized for the actions of her successor's sidekick. Please trust me when I say my successor all might would not in a good state of mind ever approve of what his sidekick did. From what we know from the bits we get from All Might's echo is that he woke up for a brief moment in the hospital and spoke of you having one for all since he passed it on before blacking out again. Said the women that hugged Izuku and he was shocked at what he heard. But can someone please explain what is going on and what is one for all? I am assuming it's the quirk I received from All Might but can I get the full story since Sir Knight I just turned my mother against me and I am likely going to get abused soon. Izuka said and all of their faces twisted a bit at that statement but the person with white hair stood up and nodded his head. Indeed, you are owed the truth from us since you have been trusted in an unknown situation, said the man as he introduced himself as the first user. You can call me first since my name has long been lost to time so it doesn't matter. The lady next to you is Nana Shimura the TH user of One for All and the MSTR of All Might. The others will be introduced to you in time but for now, let's focus on us three. Said the first which Aizuku nodded his head as the scene around him changed and they were now sitting at a table. First let's talk about the quirk itself. Good job on managing so far and not destroying yourself due to how powerful it has grown. The quirk you have is a legacy quirk from the dawn of the quirks and is called One for All. This quirk was created due to it combing with my quirk that I nor my brother knew I had. My brother forced a quirk upon me since I stood in the way of his destruction and ruling of Japan during the dawn of the quirks. My brother took the name of his quirk which is All for One and our quirk is called One for All. We are the polar opposite of him as we stand for justice and stopping his plans. However, it's taken all of these years for the TH user of One for All aka All Might to defeat my brother or so we think since we don't have that information as we never saw his dead body since the TH user didn't see it. All we know is that the TH user caved his skull in but my brother has many quirks due to his quirk allowing him to take, give, and combine quirks which have allowed him to live for the past two centuries since the dock of quirks. Are you still with me so far, said the first user and Izuku nodded his head as Nana Shimura just rubbed Izuku's hair which felt nice since it was a lovely gesture that contrasted his mother's overbearing love that she would give. My brother wanted to rule Japan but since I could pass my quirk on it only grew in power with each user as they added onto the power as they passed 50% of the quirk's strength. My brother has also hunted down everyone that has to wield this quirk so you need to be careful since he might be alive still but we don't know for sure. Now, to the issue of you being that Sir Knight I had no right to try and make you give it up. All Might gave you the quirk so it is yours now to do as you wish and we only ask you to use it for good. Not even All Might has the right to ask you to give it back either. Said the first user and Izuku brought up a point that Sir Knight I said. What about if All Might had someone he intended to pass this quirk on before he had no choice? Izuku asked and Nana shook her head as she talked. He didn't have anyone lined up to take it. As such, you were the only person in his mind. As such, you can say you were lucky that you were there but it is also fate in a way. 
Do you think we were chosen to wield the Korkazuku? She asked and he said yes but she told him no. Almost every single one of us expects Toshinori I all might was given the quirk in the heat of the moment since all before I were hunted down by all for one and were forced to make snap decisions, Nana said, as memories flood his mind of the past users passing the quirk on. I see, Izuka said and she nodded her head I see, Izuka said and she nodded her head. As such, Due to the fact that he had no one lined up in mind to take the quirk, and the fact that this is common the quirk one for all is yours only, and not even all might can take it from you. We've reviewed your memories as well and know the type of person you are. We approve of you as the TH user so don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Nana said as she hugged Izuku which made him smile. They soon moved the conversation forward. Now, all might is alive but he is recovering from the battle as you guessed correctly. Sir Knight I has done what he did of his own free will and not All Might's orders. The first user said as Izuku nodded his head as he saw All Might's ghost figure in the back which smiled at him. Freaky Izuku thought. Now the issue of your mother we should wait to see what she does but don't give the quirk up to anyone. If push comes to shove we can do some extreme things like have you run away and hide away in the mountains since the home that that each user had should still be there since no one ever found it when he was alive. We can help train you and teach you knowledge as well but the issue would be formal education that would allow you into UA or another hero school in the future, said the first user. Izuku agreed to wait to see what his mother and Sir Knight I would do moving forward but they agreed to give them two weeks to see what they would do before they made the drastic decision to run away. They did tell Izuku to start preparing himself to run away so he wasn't caught off guard if he needed to make a quick escape. They also worked on Izuku's fine control in the dreamscape as they explained how much power Izuku was using currently which was only 50% which was still hurting his body a bit as he needed to build up more muscles. They wanted him to work on controlling his concentration and making himself go to 1% naturally without risking him going over in the event he loses concentration. As such, what felt like hours passed before he started to vanish from the place but he was told he was waking up. Izuka said goodbye to them all, and he soon awoke to find his mother standing over him. Have you decided to give back what you stole? She asked and Izuku just opened his mouth and spoke. I stole nothing so I don't know what I am meant to hand over if I indeed stole anything, Izuku said and Inko stared into him before walking away. As she did she shouted out that he wasn't going to be eating breakfast either since he didn't want to admit to the truth but Izuku just kept silent. This is how Izuku's day passed until the next one where Sir Knight I made another appearance. Have you decided to hand it over? Sir Knight I asked and Izuku shrugged. I didn't steal anything. So you have nothing to receive from me. The fact that you think a quirk could be taken away from someone so easily is ridiculous. Izuku said and Sir Knight I frowned and gripped his hands tight as he stared at Izuku. Listen here brat, some delinquent like you is not worth of the power you have gained. So stop being greedy since you have no idea what you're dealing with. Sir Knight I said as he looked as if he wanted to burn Izuku with his eyes. Izuku just rolled his eyes and thought to himself how this was meant to be a decent hero yet he witnesses child neglect and does nothing about it. The fact that he thinks I am a delinquent means he must have read my school files which he should know would be. Biased due to me being formerly corkless Izuku thought as he turned his head away from Sir Knight Sir Knight I got and spoke to Inko Midoriya once again and asked if there was anything that might help convince her son to hand it over. She thought it over and nodded her head as she told him to come back in a week to see if he would hand it over as she would try some things which made Izuku curious as to what she would do. After Sir Knight I left she turned to him and spoke. Izuku if you don't stop being an ungrateful brat then I will kick you out of this house. I have raised you all of these years and loved you yet you decided to steal and cause all of this trouble. Stop being ungrateful and return to your room until you decided to hand it over. Inko said and his eyes widened in disbelief that she actually threatened him with that. He got up and ran to his room where he broke down in tears as he once again was denied food as this was the third day he has now gone without food which was making his stomach hurt a lot. Izuku soon was met with darkness as he was exhausted from crying and passed out. He was met with the past users of one for all who were at what they saw and heard from Inko Midoriya and Sir Knight I. This time though there was another member who was present which turned out to be the fourth user of the quirk Haikid Shinomori. Kid it's time to leave. 
The moment she goes to work tomorrow is when you need to leave. I want you to steal as much food and water as you can from the house after she leaves for work and then you will be escaping to the old home location I had in the forest. Once you are there you will not leave that place for much expect to try to establish a new identity once we figure out how to do that since we want to enroll you in an online school or something if we can figure out how to get that portion of the plan done. Said Haikage Shinomori which Izuku nodded his head. The TH user Nana Shimura apologized for what her successor's sidekick had done to Izuku's life but Izuku wasn't having it since it wasn't her fault and as far as they know it wasn't all mites either. Izuku just wishes things were different since he didn't think this is what he would be doing at years old but he knew he wanted to be a hero more than anything. He also knew the way his mother treated him was never truly acceptable if he had a quirk either which he saw in how she changed when he first told her he had a quirk until Sir Night Eye screwed it all up. Izuku sighed and asked for the general location of the place he was heading towards. You currently are in the prefecture of Shizuoka and you need to get to the prefecture of Gifu which is one of the most prefectures with a lot of forest areas. It's why I chose it but it still is near large cities that I could lose people in if I ever needed to escape someone. The home is located near the city of Jero which was small back then but most likely grew by now but it still shouldn't have come close to finding the hidden home which was in the mountains and forest said the fourth user Haikich. Izuku nodded his head and soon the plan overall was made on what they would be doing. Izuku resigned himself to his new fate but he wanted to be a hero even if it meant fighting the ancient evil that hunted one for all down the last two centuries if all might had failed to kill the man. 33rd POV Tuesday arrived and it was now several days since Izuku hadn't been to school though Izuku knew they wouldn't miss him. Izuku checked the entire house to make sure his mother was gone and at work before he started his plans. Izuku quickly moved to his room and grabbed his bags that he had already packed. In these bags were most of his clothing, his journal, spare journals, a few posts of All Might, his laptop, his phone, chargers, his school books, hygiene products, and some other random stuff. Izuka then took several empty bags and put all of the food that wouldn't go bad quickly in them while making a meal right away that he could eat out of the food in the fridge since he wanted a decent meal to have before he ran away. Izuku also heard a whisper in his mind that told him to steal any money from Inko that he could find which he ransacked her room and took the money he knew she stored under the bed which was about yen which was about dollar USD. Izuku felt guilty stealing the money since that is what he was doing, stealing. However, the past users kept pushing thoughts to the front of his mind reminding him that what she has done to him was emotional and physiological abuse which she has now physically abused him since she has been starving him for days now so that made him not feel as guilty anymore. After getting everything packed and changing his clothing to better ones suited to hide his appearance and throwing a medical mask on he went out the door and left his key since he wasn't going to be returning. Goodbye mother no, goodbye Inko Midoriya. I wish things could have been better between us Izuku thought as he closed the door and walked away. He soon made his way towards the train station and waited for the train that would take him in the direction that he needed. Izuku was thankful for Japan's public rail system which cost very little for transport and went almost everywhere in Japan. He had to wait about minutes until the train arrived and he got on it. Izuka looked at the map and knew he would need to take about different lines but he would make it after hours or so to the city of Jero where he would rely on the guidance of the past users to take him to the hidden home of the fourth user where he secluded himself and trained to grow the quirk since the fourth user didn't face off against all for one until after he passed the quirk later on in his life. Izuka sighed to himself as he set his alarm for minutes which was minutes before he would need to change train lines which required walking to a different station to take that train line. Soon the time passed and Izuka trains and kept repeating this process until he was on the last train line that would get him to the city of Jero. Izuku arrived and looked around the city and indeed it was still a smaller sized city compared to most of Japan but it was still decent. It was mostly built around the flow of the river that passed through the city so the city was spread out in length instead of being condensed together. Okay, predecessors please guide me. Izuka thought and soon had the urge to go towards his left and cross the bridge over the river which he did as the urges telling him to do so. Izuku soon found himself heading up towards the north. After about minutes of walking through the town and heading north, he reached the end of his path. Izuku powered one for all on at the 50% he could control and used it to increase his speed. 
He just kept going north as the urges told him to until it changed and he followed it. After about minutes of traveling with one for all at 50%, he arrived at his destination though he was exhausted from using the quirk for so long. He could have done better but he only had one meal in the past few days which has drained him of a lot of energy. Though, Izuku put that out of his mind for now as he felt the urges confirm that he was at his goal as he found a home that was on the edge of the river. He just needed to get across the river to the other side which he found a very old and broken bridge about a minute up the river. Izuku knew he would need to prepare the bridge but that would be a project for later on. Overall the house was still standing but it without a doubt was worn down with age as it was in need of repairs overall, the house was still standing but it without a doubt was worn down with age as it was in need of repairs. Better than sleeping in the streets or on the ground in the forest. Izuku thought as he put his bag down and examined the building. The fourth user had told Izuku that it had a small water mill that helped provide power to the building since the river did have a constant speed. It wasn't fast but it was enough to move a small water mill to provide an electrical current. Izuku found the water mill and examined it. A few parts would need to be replaced in time but it seemed to be able to work so Izuku pushed it down the hole in the room and into the water and within minutes the home turned on with power. The house did have an old refrigerator that would need to get replaced since it had sat for so long that it wouldn't work. It also had other old appliances that would need to get replaced as well since they were without a doubt dead but Izuku was once again glad that he had basic needs met such as a roof over his head and running water since there was a device to pull water out of the river and purify it as long as the water mill was running. Izuku got it going since the mill was providing power now and he wanted to make sure he had water stored in the event he needed it and to take a bath later on. Izuka made a list of things that would need to be taken care of later on which included a new refrigerator, freezer, TV, fix the bridge, repair the parts for the water mill so it doesn't break down, acquire a new sleeping bed, and repair the overall building. More immediate needs were to find sources of food since the water was already taken care of. The fourth user did explain that he fished for most of his food since back then the river was filled with a lot of fish but he also sourced some of his food from the forest and animals so they would start teaching him how to do all of that as part of his training. The main thing that Izuku needed to do was to see if the river still had fish since it would serve as his main source of food. So Izuku found the old and almost broken fishing pole and put the line in the water. I will need to get a new pole or make one if any of them knows how to make one but it seems there is still finish in this water. Izuka thought as about minutes had passed and he had caught a decent size fished on his line as he pulled it out of the water. Izuku was happy and he could feel some happiness from the past users as well. Izuka soon found the kitchen area and put the fish down as he went out and grabbed sticks and other things. The stove was a wood base and Izuku honestly didn't know how to work it but the fourth user was sending him urges on what to do which helped guide him which Yusuku was thankful for. As such, about an hour or so he was able to get the fire going in the wood cooking stove and started to cook the few fishes that he had caught. Izuku was glad to have this wood stove because it could provide heat to the home during the winter and use it to cook. Izuka had the doors on the stove open as he was using a metal skewer to cook the fish over the flames since it would be harder for him to cook it on the stove since he lacked experience but it still got the job done. Izuka sat there as he had closed the doors and limited the airflow in the stove to only put off so much heat to warm the place up since they were closing in on winter in a few months so Izuku wanted to heat the house a bit as he ate the cooked fishes. Izuku was also looking over the stuff he had and knew he would need to do some odd jobs in the town below to earn some money if people were kind enough to take pity on a random child. I am going to need to get an axe and tools to cut down trees and be able to repair this home as well but that can wait a bit of time as I grow older. First I need to ensure I can get food from the forest as well and also figure out my education issues since I need some form of formal education to get into hero schools. Izuka thought but decided it would be a project for the next day since he was exhausted. Izuka checked to see if there was any internet signal this far out in the forest area and was slightly surprised to find one though it was somewhat weaker. Such a good thing that Japan made the internet a national controlled asset after Quirks appeared. It granted everyone with a working device to connect to the internet for free but the problem is being monitored which I need to be careful with. Izuku thought as he removed the SIM card from his phone and deactivated it so he couldn't be reached. Instead, he used his computer and looked up the news in regards to All Might but found nothing new. 
He also looked to see if he was reported missing yet or a case started by Sir Night Eye since they should have discovered him missing by now since his mother had already arrived home about hours ago. Though Izuku wondered if she would even bother reporting him missing which would be helpful if she didn't alert Sir Night Eye since the longer he was missing before that man knew the better chance his trail would be cold. Izuka sighed and decided to power his devices off and just plug them into the outlet on the wall. I need to figure out a way to store energy in the event the water mill ever stopped since if we ever get a really cold winter then the river might freeze over even though it is rare but again that is a side project for later. Izuku thought as he decided to go to sleep for the night. Izuku fell into his dreams and found himself once again in the void of one for all where the fourth user congratulated him on finding the home. It without a doubt has worn down over the years but it is still good enough for you to live in seclusion, for the most part, to hide away from Sir Nai Tai and any other heroes he decides to employ in his schemes that man can't be trusted. All Might was a fool to let that man know the truth of the quirk said the fourth user which the others remained silent on the topic since they didn't believe it their place to talk about it since it was the th user that told the man but they did agree that the man couldn't be trusted in regard to the current user's safety. A week had passed since Izuka Midoriya had run away from his home and Sir Night Eye was furious while Inko Midoriya shrugged it off since she had threatened to kick him out anyway. Sir Night Eye had asked her what she attempted to do to get Izuku to hand it over and she said she threatened to throw him out on the streets which resulted in Izuka Midoriya grabbing what he could and running. Inko was about the money being stolen and food but that could be replaced with time. Sir Night Eye though was that he didn't get told that the boy had run away when she had his number. He had asked her why she didn't contact him or report the boy missing and she just said he was better off gone since he was causing so many issues. It's not like you can get with me when you are making him a villain already since he stole from the symbol of peace. No one will care about him so why should I? I raised him all of these years while he was still corkless and my life took a nosedive since my husband left after my brat was declared corkless. I had loved him since he used to be a good boy but you showed me he was nothing more than a thief and child that caused problems. Just hunt him down and declare him a criminal or something since he stole money from me. Inko said as she kicked the man out of the home. Sir Night Eye was with the woman but left regardless to try and figure out where the boy had gone. Overall he couldn't do much unless he started an official case which would require him to state the reasons why he made the case which he couldn't do without exposing the fact about the quirk itself. He couldn't really use the fact that the boy stole money from the mother since that would be a civil issue between them since she was responsible for the boy. He though did convince Inko Midoriya to report him missing since that would mean he would have some legal reasons to look into Izuka Midoriya and for him. This allowed him some means to look into the boy more and try to track him down but so far Sir Knight I didn't have any luck since it seemed the boy planned well and he lost track of him after he got off the train the first time. However, Sir Knight I didn't expect All Might to wake up from his small coma about a month later since it was believed he would wake up in two months' time and not one month which means that All Might would begin his own search for the boy. This meant that Sir Knight I would need to present what he found so far and the fact that the boy had a large amount of trouble that he caused plus the fact that he stole a lot of money before running away from his mother. Though, Sir Knight I knew that All Might had a big heart and would claim that the boy could be redeemed or something on the lines. Soon the month passed and All Might woke up in his hospital room as he was finally able to keep himself awake since he had survived the surgery which consumed so much of his energy and they were forced to put him in a medical coma that he could wake himself out of. The doctors came in and started to check him over as well as a pro hero named Recovery Girl. Well, it's good that you are finally awake. You almost died, you big idiot. Recovery Girl said and he apologized to her. After all of the other staff left the room he turned to her and asked what has happened in the time since he's been asleep. Overall people have started to notice you not showing up in places. Sir Knight I had put a statement out saying you were going under a mission that required your movements to be hidden for a long term. The commission backed it up as well since they knew you had gotten injured but they don't know how bad. All Might nodded his head and asked if they retrieved all for one's body and she shook her head. His men grabbed it first it appears to stop us from getting it. She said and he nodded his head and asked if Gran Torino and Nizu would be coming soon with Sir Night Eye. I am sure they will be informed of you waking up sooner or later. Anyway, how do you feel and are there any side effects that you can feel for your quirk? She asked him and at that, 
his eyes widen which concerned her, that I almost forgot but I transferred one for all to a young boy. I can't remember his name but I am sure I knew it. I thought I was going to die since I landed in an alley with a lot of wounds but he ended up finding me and patching me up. I know he used to be corkless though and he had green hair but I can't remember his name since it's fuzzy. All Might said and she was shocked. We will need to start searching for him but I am sure we can find him since there aren't many corkless people left in Japan. Do you remember how young he was? She asked and he said he looked between and which she noted down for Nizu and the others later. Hopefully he doesn't try using it before he puts a lot of muscle on his bones or else he might kill himself with it. How much did you get to tell him of the quirk before you separated from him? She asks and he said nearly nothing except that he needed to train before he used it and to trust the predecessors to guide him. Soon the door opened and there stood Sir Naitai, Gran Torino, Nizu, and Detective Tsukachi Namesa who was a friend of All Might. All Might then explained the situation to them all and they agreed to help in the search. Sir Knight I spoke up at that point and told them about most of the situation in regard to the boy. I actually know the boy's name. You woke up one time when I was here and uttered his name and that you passed it, which I knew you meant one for all. I found his files which shows a distributing fact that he is a delinquent that has caused a lot of issues in his school. He has also recently run away from home and stole a lot of money from his mother who raised him about two weeks after he had the cork registered. Based on what I found from the mother he only showed her it after months after you passed it on to him. Sir Knight I said as he presented the files he gathered to All Might and the others. Sir Knight I informed them that the mother has reported the boy missing but outside of that he lost track of the boy on cameras as he tried to track him down. All Might was in shock at what he was reading of the boy. From what he told me and how he acted in front of me these show someone completely different. All Might said and the detective spoke up at that point. People do tend to act completely different in front of authority figures. It's not unheard of at all for people that cause trouble to attempt to use an image to hide what they do. Said the detective completely unaware of what Sir Knight I had done in this situation or that the files were heavily biased against Izuku Midoriya. He knew that people received discrimination but he was used to lighter discrimination and not something so heavily biased since schools tend to try and avoid raising suspicions if they made a file too heavily biased. With how much trouble he has been involved in there is no way he would have made it past the screeners at UA so I don't know why he claimed to you that he wanted to go there since he wouldn't get in. Nizu said as he felt something was off but didn't know what it was but Sir Knight I spoke up which brought him off of his thoughts. Anyway, recovery girl. How are All Might's current condition and outlook for the future? He asked her and she started to explain his situation and the fact that he was missing portions of his organs so his body would deteriorate into a worse state in the future. That made them all grimace and filed the need to find the TH user. So we will need to find the kid and get him to transfer it to someone more worthy of being the future symbol of peace. Sir Knight I said but All Might said no. I believe his words were true in what he wanted to do in his future when he spoke to me. I believe even if these files are true that I can turn the boy onto a better path so unless he shows me that he isn't redeemable then I won't ask him to transfer the quirk. I will instead help him train once I find him and provide him home if he doesn't want to return to his mother's home if there is something wrong there. All Might said. Sir Knight I brought up the fact that his record would prevent him from getting into a hero school like UA and All Might scoffed at that. I am doubtful UA's screeners or Nizu here would reject a request from me if I can put him on a better path. Nizu also would likely rather have the TH user in his school now wouldn't you Principal Nizu? All Might said and asked Nizu who was in the room. Nizu thought it over and nodded as he spoke. If All Might could indeed turn the boy to a better path we wouldn't ignore a letter of reference from the number one hero and symbol of peace, Nizu said confirming All Might's statement which irritated Sir Knight I since he didn't believe the boy was worthy of the quirk. A week had passed since that conversation and Sir Knight I tried to convince All Might to retire due to his state but All Might had refused. It was then that Sir Knight I spoke up about the future he had seen when he used his quirk on All Might. If you continue down this path then you will end up dying a horrible and gruesome death. Sir Knight I yelled out but All Might took that as a challenge instead and said that he needed to find the TH user and help train them even more now instead as the world needed a symbol of peace until then. 
Sir Knight Eye gritted his teeth and said he couldn't stand around and watch him go to his death with some random boy that was not even fit to become the next symbol of peace due to all of the trouble he caused and would likely cause in the future. As such, Sir Knight Eye turned in the opposite direction and walked away. Thus this resulted at the end of the partnership between Sir Knight Eye and All Might nor did Sir Knight Eye admit to the truth that he had a hand in Izuka Midoriya running away since he didn't believe he truly did have a hand in it. He truly believed in his mind that Izuka Midoriya was just a boy that caused a lot of troubles and would never become a hero. He also believed that Izuka Midoriya running away would have happened no matter what nor did he report the fact that Inko Midoriya was abusive, neglectful, nor the fact that she had actually abandoned Izuka Midoriya instead of him running away on his own free will since she left him no other options. No, none of this would come out until much later on as the detective wouldn't question Inko Midoriya for a long time since they had information from her already due to Sir Knight Eye questioning her or so they thought. Until then Sir Knight Eye would not be held responsible for the crimes he committed. 33rd POV Izuka Midoriya was breathing strong as he laid on the ground in the middle of the forest. The reason he was breathing strong was that he was currently training his body over the past months since he arrived here in the forest. Many things have happened as he had gone into town and purchased tools such as an axe and many other physical tools. Izuka didn't have the money to spare on the high-end electricals and knew very well that the watermill wouldn't support supplying the electrical energy for all of the tools plus the refrigerator that he had bought as well as a few other appliances. He also knew his money was running dry as well and he's been lucky that he's found a few households that took pity on him and offered him odd jobs. Most of these households were older families that were too old to do a lot of things themselves so having a young child with a lot of energy was amazing for them since Izuku could do a lot of things they couldn't in their old age such as chop a tree down or pull all of the weeds out of the large garden. However, back to the training and tools part. A part of the training that he got from the past users were having Izuku do was to use the axe and cut down some trees where he would then cut it into parts. Some parts were turned into lumber that he used to repair the home which they taught him how to cut the wood correctly into parts and some of the tree parts were turned into training equipment such as heavy and large trunks that were left alone were used as a giant weight to lift with the quirk turned on. As such over the past months he had pushed his quirk control from 50% to 50% which felt amazing to Izuku for being only years old and having such an improvement with his small body and being on his own since he doesn't count the death as being actual people with him since people would think he was crazy if he ever claimed that. Anyway, Izuka had repaired the bridge with the wood he had made and the bridge was in a much better condition now though he knew he would need to replace the parts since he didn't have the money to purchase a wood sealer to stop the wood from rotting due to the elements. He also repaired portions of the house and again would need to replace them sooner or later in the future due to lacking funds to buy a wood sealer. Izuku would rather save the money and replace them instead of using a wood sealer and not having money for an emergency. Other than the physical LBR of the tree cutting, Izuku also received a training plan from the past users who had good knowledge on building up muscles. They wanted him to build up significant muscles but over time since they didn't want his body to be harmed by putting too much muscle on but instead to get a nice toned and firm body instead which they could get over the years. Most of the training was with routines that would help him slowly build up his muscles but most of it was focused on building up endurance so he would have the stamina to last for a long time. Some other things he was working on were combat lessons that the users had him learning. He would repeat exercises that the past users would teach him when he went into his dreamscape every few days and he would spend the time between practicing them until he got it and they moved him to the next step. Outside of physical training, he also needed to train his mind. Now there was a slight issue since Inko Midoriya had reported Izuku missing a week after he ran away. He found this out since he did a search about his name and found a small news article about it that didn't say much except that he ran away and was missing. What concerned Izuku was the fact that Sir Enitai was reported to be the main person investigating it since he had requested the case. Izuku knew not to trust anyone related to his case now since they would be tied to Sir Knight Eye and under his direction which didn't mean anything good for Izuku. The past users had told Izuku of the information they gained from the All Might Echo that fed them information. They told him about how Sir Knight Eye fed Izuku's school records to All Might and painted him as a troublemaker which was bullshit but they also told him about how All Might said that he would turn Izuku onto a better path even if the file was true which made Izuku happy. 
He asked if he should try contacting All Might but they couldn't come to a decision as they were split on it. Half believed they should contact All Might while the other half believed Izuku should stay hidden for now and train in secret since they didn't know if All for One was alive or not. Most of the older users believed he should train in hiding while Nana and more current users thought he should reach out to All Might. They were at a tie of 3 versus 3 since the first user didn't get involved in the vote nor did All Might Echo get a vote since he wasn't fully there so they rejected his vote. Izuku also didn't vote since he found his situation right now livable and didn't want to risk going back to his mother's care in all honestly since he was doing quite fine on his own. He only needed to figure out the education issue which was still a slight issue. They all decided to put the topic on the side burner and focus on the issue of education since they couldn't reach an agreement on reaching out to All Might or not. Now, finding a way to enroll him in school was troublesome. They decided to do an online school that had accreditation internationally and only required him to verify his identity which he could do since he grabbed all of his documents before he ran away like his BRH certificate, ID card, government identification number, and other government documents. The online school that was accredited internationally also met the Japanese standards so Izuku applied for it since they wouldn't need to report him signing up for it as long as the documents checked out. He did have to take a placement exam since he didn't provide current school documents as a result he ended up placing two grades ahead of his current age group which wasn't surprising to Izuku nor the past users. Izuku always did have to learn on his own due to the bias from the teachers which meant he needed to self-study and learn at his own pace which was faster than the pace of the school. This resulted in him being in classes for TH grade or those that were or 13 years old. Izuku accepted it since it meant he would be done with his schooling faster and have more time focused on physical training since the school he enrolled in online was a self-paced class type. Everything was online and they only had to have a video session to take the exam itself when it was time which required them to show the room and take the exam on a secured browser that made it impossible to cheat. Time soon passed and it had now been months since Izuka Midoriya had escaped his home and been missing. Izuka had gained more money off of the side jobs he was doing for people which helped his situation but he had to be careful of the police since they would most likely know him from his missing person case if they ever got his name. As such, he always used a different name which was Nainsu which meant the ninth in a literal sense. Some were confused on why that was his name but he said it held a special meaning to him which they accepted at face value since most of the people he did jobs for figured out he was most likely homeless. Some older families asked him if he was safe where he was and he answered that he was indeed and was fine since he earned money on the side jobs so he had no troubles that they needed to worry about. Overall, the house had been fully repaired and was in decent condition as well. Izuku had also figured a way out to store energy in some batteries in the event that the watermill ever stopped working during the winter so he would have some power that he knew he would need to conserve since he could store about an entire month's worth of energy before it ran out if he used it non-stop but if he limited his use of it, he could get two months out of the batteries. Izuku was also looking into making a solar panel which was time-consuming in making and likely was going to be a several-month project since he needed to get the parts to make it. Izuka knew that he was going to be living in the forest home for the long run since the past users had still not come to an agreement on reaching out to All Might anytime soon. As such, the first user had set down conditions that Izuku was allowed to reach out to All Might on his own if he gained control of 50% of the quirk since it would provide him a defense in the off chance All for One was still alive. Otherwise, they would wait until it was near time for UA to reach out to All Might. Izuku agreed to the conditions since he trusted the past users since they haven't led him astray yet. He also was enjoying his life currently since he could focus so much on training and not worry about bullies or adults harming him though the past users were concerned about his ability to interact with others if he didn't get much interaction out of his trips to the town which he promised to interact as much as he could with any people around his age which they accepted. Now outside of that issue, there was the issue of winter being in the full blast which he completely forgot about winter clothing. He and the past users were debating on trying to go to town to buy winter clothing and more blankets versus just staying in the home and keeping it warm since he had a high pile of wood. Overall they refused to let him go out and train in the deep cold since he didn't have good clothing to stay out long in the cold but they didn't want him to pause on his progress which was doing good since he was now at 50% during the months that had passed. After much debate, 
It was decided that he would make the run into town using his quirk to go through the forest quickly and make it to the store at night since he could use his quirk in the cover of darkness with little finding him. They knew there was a slash department store that would be open so that is what they did. It was also turned into stealth training to avoid the small number of heroes that were in this town and avoid the police as well. But such, after an hour out in the cold avoiding police and other heroes he had gone and returned from the store with winter clothing and more blankets for the winter. They didn't need to worry about having a space heater or anything since the stove provided enough heat off of it to heat the entire house since it wasn't large. 33rd POV We find ourselves in a large city that housed mighty towers which is where All Might himself worked and lived most of the time on the top floors of the agency. All Might however wasn't good as he was anxious overall and you might wonder why was the number one pro hero anxious. Well, it was pretty simple for those that knew the truth. It was due to the fact that they couldn't find any clues on Izuka Midroya being alive at all. The police had wanted to close the missing person case and declared him dead but All Might had stepped in and stopped it from happening with the help of his detective friend. All Might expressed that he believed the boy was still alive and he was a person of interest to All Might. As such, the case was reassigned from Sir Night Eye to All Might himself since Sir Night Eye didn't have the ability to stop it from being reassigned to the number one pro hero. All Might still had a strained relationship with his former sidekick since the man wanted him to retire still and didn't believe Izuka Midoriya could be a good fit for the TH user. However, All Might knew for some reason unknown to him that Izuka Midoriya was the perfect fit for the quirk even though he couldn't describe why he felt like this. Unknown to him it was one for all itself causing this reaction since it was connected to Izuka Midoriya and the past users who all supported the TH user. Even the second and third users who were more of hardliners that hardly supported anyone or got involved had a soft side for the teach user due to his past and ability to survive on his own as he was. However, back to All Might himself. He was concerned about the lack of details in finding Izuka Midoriya as it appeared the boy dropped off the face of the earth and never appeared again. Not even Principal Nizu has been able to find the boy on any camera again after they lost him even though they were able to track him down to at least one more station but they lost visual of him after that station since they never found him getting off of the train they saw him get on except for the fact that there was one station where he most likely got off but the cameras were down being repaired that day. As such, they knew a possible area but Izuka Midoriya could have gotten on a train, a bus, a cab, or anything else at the stop so they had zero clues where he went since there weren't many public cameras around the train station where they had a dead zone where they believed he had stopped at. As such, they never found him going to a new station which camera was also under maintenance as well since the city was replacing them all on the same day so they didn't know if he ever got on a train so they didn't know where to look since that station fed into many different places. Nizu told All Might he would keep looking but there was a lot of footage from all of the different possible stops and it would take him a large amount of time since a lot of the footage wasn't good enough to run through a program to scan for Izuka Midoriya's face so Nizu had to do it manually. As such, it's been an entire year now since Izuka Midoriya had been missing and All Might didn't know where the Teach user was even though he was sure the boy was alive due to the feeling he had with his own version of One for All is what he told Nizu, Recovery Girl, Gran Torino, and the detective who all helped contain to search for the boy. All Might knew he could release a statement asking for people to search for him but that was a heavy risk he wasn't willing to do since villains would target the boy. All Might had also taken advice from Recovery Girl and Nizu to save his time limit as best as he could since he had a large number of hours currently but was warned it would go away over the years since he didn't have one for all anymore. As such, he always would make public appearances in the afternoon when he did villain fights for about hours a day before he would return to his agency and do the paperwork to hide his form which was starting to shrink from his normal hero form. Recovery Girl was giving him IVs that he needed to take all of the time and a lot of vitamins that could get some things extracted while in his small intestines that had been turned into something like a stomach since he lost his actual one due to all for one. It was the best he could do to keep his power as long as he could to find Izuku Midoriya. Though something felt off in regards to the boy's mother which made All Might worried as well. All Might felt as if there was something there that needed to be addressed but he didn't know what it was. As such, he decided to consult the detective who would likely be able to handle it much better since he had the lie detector quirk. He had asked the detective to stop by his agency whenever he was in town which was several weeks later. 
The detective asked what he needed and All Might pointed out how a statement that Izuku Midoriya made came back to his mind. The day I passed the quirk to him I asked him, what are your dreams for the future? And he told me that, I want to be a hero even though everyone tells me I should just give up. I want to make a better society that doesn't treat people like me like trash, as worthless, as wastes of space I want to save people with a smile on my face and make them feel that even if I am against great odds that I will do everything I can do even if it looks horrible. That they can have hope for a better tomorrow. And the reason this stuck with me is due to the fact that he treated some of my wounds which Recovery Girl had pointed out were decently done. I remind you this is an year old back then who had enough medical knowledge to get praise out of Recovery Girl. All Might said and the detective started to see where this was going but asked to get confirmation of what he suspected. As you suspect is likely what I suspect. I believe he may have been abused and is the reason he ran away from home or likely received a lot of abuse or neglect from the school which his mother ignored and then suddenly treated him better after he had a quirk which most likely made him snap and run away to escape her. As such, I would like you to start digging into his old school and his mother as well. All Might asked and the detective nodded his head since he could see the possibility of their suspicions being corrected based on the words of Izuka Midoriya from that day. The detective did warn All Might that the investigation was likely going to be slow since his bosses wouldn't approve of Might time being spent on it since Izuka Midoriya was currently missing and in their minds dead. All Might nodded his head and asked for any time he could spare for the case since it could take as long as they needed since it really mattered more once they found the boy himself to confirm their theories if they couldn't G.E.T. enough information since if he was abused, All Might wasn't going to let him go back to that home. Soon the meeting came to an end and the detective went home for the day since he had a long drive ahead of him. All Might though sat in his chair and looked out of the window with his reflection in the glass. Where are you Izuku Midoriya? All Might asked to no one in the room as he spoke to himself. He truly wondered how the boy was doing in his training and if he heeded his warning to train his body up to use the quirk since he knew the boy had activated the quirk once before from what they gained from the quirk doctor notes since All Might knew the boy had control over a very small portion of the quirk which made All Might happy that the boy already had some form of control. He only hoped he was increasing his control and staying as safe as he could. Though as All Might thought of this we could find one Izuku Midoriya jumping between the trees as he was training in jumping between large spaces to replicate traveling over rooftops since the past users told him he would likely do it a lot in his future hero career. As such, Izuku was high up in the air in the trees doing some practice as he made large jumps between branches which had freaked the past users out the first time he did it and almost fell. Izuku though just laughed since he could feel their shock and dread at what he was doing but accepted it and encouraged him to do it more since he was pretty good at it. Though you could find Nana Shimura in a portion of the void complaining like a mother hen that Izuku shouldn't be that risky. Back to my tower, All Might felt a sudden shudder down his spine. That wasn't a good shudder for some reason, I feel as if the boy is doing something really stupid right now, All Might thought and if he knew what Izuku was doing he would be freaked out if he saw the first attempt like the other past users had seen from inside of Izuku's mind. Though All Might would likely never learn of the truth of Izuku's crazy tree jumping stunts or maybe he would. Who knows? 33rd POV The morning sun was rising in the air and as you exit from the home in the forest, you could see the breath come off of one Izuku Midoriya as he was outside training as he has done every single day for the past four years since he had arrived in this hidden land. It has also been four years that have passed since he had escaped from his mother's home. Izuku came to a stop and moved to the edge of the house as he sat down on the edge of the home. Izuku turned his head and looked at the river that was flowing on the other side of the home and he could see fish jumping out of the water every so often. Izuku turned his head and looked at the river that was flowing on the other side of the home and he could see fish jumping out of the water every so often the land had provided for Izuku ever since he had made the journey from his former home no from his former shelter to his current home as the previous dwelling where he lived with his mother wasn't a home in reality and Izuku has long accepted this. Izuku was truly thankful for the past users always guiding him over the years. Especially when the quirk one for all evolved in a sense that even the past users didn't see coming until it happened. Now you might be wondering what Izuku is talking about. Well, 
The past users and Izuku realized that Izuku had access to the previous user's quirks on top of one for all itself and they figured this out one day when Izuku activated the TH's user's quirk float after he had fallen from a tree one day since it had rained the night before so the tree branch was slipper than Izuku accounted for. As such, when he was falling the feeling generated from Nana Shimura and Izuku at the same time resulted in Izuku unlocking her quirk, and right before he smacked the ground he was floating in the air. They were all shocked until the past users started to feel the differences in the quirk itself and noticed that the core of the quirk had grown from the last time they had looked at it which had been years since they had no reason to investigate the core until then. As such, they theorized that the quirk had passed the point of quirk singularity which has resulted in it pushing the quirks from the other users out to a point that Izuku could activate them for himself. As such, it was theorized he had awakened them all but he needed to activate them himself. This had happened two and a half years after he had escaped from his old home and had arrived in the forest. As such, instead of working full-time on one for all itself they had him slipped his time working on training the other quirks and activating them in the event that he needed them. It was also important to have them trained beforehand in the event they activated during an emergency because if they did that and he had zero training in controlling them then he would be a threat to other people which none of them wanted to happen. As such, he started to train the past user's quirk of float from teach, danger sense from teach, black whp from teach, mist from teach, enhanced reflexes from RD, and weapons MSR from ND. As there wasn't a quirk from the TH or ST user since All Might was quirkless as Izuku learned from Nana Shimura which was shocking to him and Izuku had questions on why he didn't do more for the quirkless people. Also, the first user's quirk was really one for all itself. Now, in regards to why All Might didn't do more, Nana explained that portion. From all he knew the quirkless treatment was still similar to his own which was light physical bullying and mostly verbal. Quirkless people were not common but more common than your generation so he had put it outside of his mind on what treatment you received but I can tell you he knows now since he looked into your school and mother. She's been arrested roughly a few months ago so it took him about years to get the information since the detective and he worked on it privately in their spare time. Nana Shimura said and Izuku nodded his head with a smile that All Might knew the truth about his mother. Izuku did ask if All Might learned the truth of Sir Naitai's involvement and she shook her head and told him that they had split and Inko Midoriya didn't mention anything about Sir Naitai since they didn't question her about it nor did she know All Might himself was involved. As such, it never came to light. Izuku without a doubt knew he was going to be alerting all might of the truth of that incident since he refused to let Sir Night Eye get away without others knowing how he truly acted in private. Though enough of that as let's jump forward to Izuku's current point in time as he was sitting on the edge of the home as he was taking a breather. Izuku was exhausted overall since training so many quirks over the years was taxing but he was making amazing progress. He had recently hit 50% of one for all and right now he had decent control over all of the quirks as well. Black WHP was the most annoying quirk he's ever dealt with or seen but he had been able to control the semi-sentient quirk after years of training. Outside of that, the other quirks were an interesting combination that he had. The float quirk was relativity easy to learn and train since he had the initial user to teach him and it was by far the most easier one to get the hang of compared to the others. This quirk allowed him to float in the air or even fly in a sense due to how powered up it had become due to one for all enhancing it after so many years. Danger senses was a bit annoying as it wanted to register everything as a potential danger but after a while and in seclusion for some time he was able to rework his mind to define what was dangerous to him as something that could actively pose a threat to him or others. For example, a car that was on a path towards him or if someone had ill intent to harm him. Danger Sense did have a way to tell how dangerous a person was as well so Izuku kept that as a passive effect and more on if he was in mortal danger active if something was going to harm him but after a lot of training he got it to a workable stage. He didn't know how it would react in a large city but at least in the small city nearby it was completely fine as it only threw up a possible danger every so often that Izuku could easily ignore. Now on to the more interesting quirks that Izuku ended up working them together as a combination. The quirks from the ND, RD, and TH users all made an interesting fighting style for Izuku as the ND quirk user allowed him to train faster with weapons. 
They didn't provide his complete mastery over something but it granted him basic knowledge and he easily was able to train it up at a faster rate than other people. Then he had the enhanced reflexes quirk from the RD user which allowed him to move his body at a faster rate which he needed to train his eyes and body to keep up with his mind's reflexes that the quirk produced which tied into more physical training which granted him the 50% control of one for all. Overall, Izuku was easily able to dodge almost everything as long as his mind could keep up with it since his body could keep up with his mind due to one for all. Then there was the TH's user's quirk which was called Mist. This quirk allowed Izuku to condense the water molecules in the air to be heavier to create a mist in the air and slightly control it. Though that wasn't the main function of this quirk. The main function was the ability to go into the mist and appear in different places as if he teleported when he was really becoming a part of the mist and appearing somewhere else so in a form it was a teleportation quirk but short range. Izuku trained greatly with this quirk, and the users were confused except that each user N who had a theory which was confirmed one day when Izuku combined mist with enhanced reflexes and weapons Emser which turned into a very fearsome fighting style as Izuku would condense mist in his fighting area and appear behind the fake targets and attack them with the weapons. One for all itself was also amazing to add to this fighting style as well since Izuku could get right behind someone and just hit them with a powerful attack though most likely a kick since Izuku focused more on kicking attacks since his arms were not as good as All Might's and didn't pack as much punch as his legs did. Black WHP was used in this fighting style as well but less often since Izuku didn't want to ruin his clothing all of the time since it ripped through his shirts near his wrists which annoyed him. As such, Izuku Midoriya had a fundamental level of control over all of his quirks that One for All had provided him and he had gained 50% control of One for All as well and is now entering the winter months of his fourth year being gone. Izuku realized that he ran away shortly after he turned 9 and he was now years old. This meant there was roughly a little over a year left before he would need to leave the forest for UA which complicates matters due to the fact that he hasn't reached out to All Might yet. Izuka decided to go to sleep since he wanted to talk to the past users on that issue and soon he was in his dreamscape of the void that was one for all. Hello, Izuku. It's been about a week since you purposely pushed yourself into the dreamscape. I see you wish to talk about All Might, said the first user as everyone appeared before him and Izuku nodded his head. Indeed, soon it will be time to go to UA and I have 50% control of one for all as well. I would likely have far higher if the other quirks didn't appear since I had to divert time to them. Overall, I had all of my middle school and the first two years of high school completed which just leaves third year level work to be finished. I expect to have that done likely soon regardless but I have decided to reach out to All Might via Principal Nizu of UA. Izuku said and they asked him why to Nizu instead of All Might himself. Izuku thought over it quickly before explaining his thoughts. Multiple reasons. First, I don't want Sir Night Eye somehow getting wind of this. As you told me before, All Might doesn't know of Sir Night Eye's crimes yet. This means that All Might may inform Sir Night Eye even though their relationship has soured. As such, Sir Night Eye could attempt to get to me first due to his greed for One for All. Second, you all have told me that Nizu knows about One for All and is trusted by All Might. This way, I can warn Nizu about not trusting and informing Sir Night Eye and to have him inform All Might. Izuka said and they all nodded their heads. Izuka then asked him if they are able to guide All Might as they did to him to get All Might to the secret house. The past users thought it over and they nodded their heads. They warned him that it would strain his own mind a bit since they were a part of him but they could reconnect with All Might's version more to guide him to the home once Izuku had informed Nizu. They would monitor All Might's version and know once All Might has been informed. As such, a plan has been made and Izuku decided to reach out to Principal Nizu of UA so he decided to head into town as he disguised himself with a hoodie and a medical mask and entered a public library. Izuku then plugged in a thumb drive and started up his hacking skills. The cool fact is that the RD user was an expert hacker back in his days during the time closer to the dawn of the quirks. Izuku was shocked to learn this but accepted it since hacking was a good skill to have in this day and age since it allowed him to investigate more and get information easier. As such, Izuku hid his location since they would guide them to the city instead. Izuku then hacked into UA which took a bit of time but he did it nonetheless. 
Within moments he received a response on the little chat box he sent to Principal Nizu's computer. Let the journey begin all might. Izuka thought with a smile at reuniting with his MSTR even though the main didn't directly train him he did impart knowledge from his Echo since the other users would take information from that all might and give it to Izuku to learn from more up-to-date events and techniques like changing the weather which Izuku used once in a while when he had reached 50%. 33rd POV Principal Nizu was standing in the staff room of UA when an alarm on his phone went off. He quickly pulled it out and dropped his teacup which shocked the staff since they all knew how much their boss loved his tea. Eraserhead having the ball decided to ask what freaked their boss out until they all saw him run out of the room quickly. This concerned them all but their boss would tell them if something was really wrong and they needed to deal with it. While they were doing that, Nizu had quickly run to his office since he had just learned that someone had successfully hacked into UA. Nizu had multiple reactions which included shock since he made the system himself and thrill since he could hunt the person down since he hasn't had a challenge in hacking for a while. Nizu quickly arrived in his office ignoring all of the students that freaked out seeing him run quickly. Nizu turned his computer screen on and looked ready to start tracking the hacker down when he noticed a chat box on his screen. Uh, the person wants to talk. Nizu thought as he ran a program to check for Trojan horses and any other virus in the chat box but found none so he deemed it safe enough to talk through it. Nizu typed out his message and sent it. Nizu equals Principal Nizu, Nainsu equals the ninth in Japanese A Izuka Midoriya Nizu. Hello, how may I help the individual who decided to hack my school? Nainsu, hello, Principal Nizu. When Nizu saw the name that went across his screen, he froze for a second before typing out a message. Could this be a joke or is it meaning what I hope it means? Nizu thought since they haven't had any clues on the ninth user of One for All for years even though All Might said he knew the user was still alive due to One for All telling him somehow that they are alive. Nizu Hu. That is an interesting name you have taken. Does it have any meaning and connection to why you decided to hack into my school? Nainsu. Indeed it does however you know the true meaning of what Nainsa means. As such, can you pass a message on for me to ensure it doesn't get caught by nosy eyes and ears? Nizu, I can most certainly pass it on to who I believe you intend the message for. Nainsu, here is the message then. Nainsu, in an alley of BLD we met, you told me to trust the past and I did. Now it's your turn to trust the past and be guided to the future. Though be warned those formerly at your side sought the future in greed and caused harm so be wary of those you bring to seek the future or else you risk not being guided by the past. Nainsu, I hope my message can be delivered and trust well placed in Yunizu. Hopefully, you and he will understand the meaning I have placed in this message. Until we meet Principal Nizu, the other party has left. Nizu sat there looking at his screen in astonishment as he could not track the individual down. The TH user has skills that he has acquired I wasn't able to track him down or break down his defenses to track him down in time before the chat ended. Though the message he has left us is worrisome, Nizu thought as he grabbed his phone and made the call to the man that the message is intended for. After a few rings, All Might answered the phone. Uh, Principal Nizu, how may I help you since our meeting for me to teach there isn't for a few more months? All Might asked and Nizu took a breath before he spoke. All might I need you to come to my office at once. I've received a troubling message that you need to receive in person. Don't tell anyone about you coming here as we have a large issue. It deals with the alley all those years ago if you know what I mean. Nizu said and All Might was silent before saying he would arrive by the late afternoon before Yue lets out. Nizu thanked him and decided to prepare for the meeting. Nizu quickly headed back to the staff room and they all asked him if there was an issue that needed to be dealt with. Maybe Aizawa. Don't plan to go on patrols for the next week. I might need your services depending on if I can get approval for you to join us. We might encounter trouble on our journey or might not. I will let you know once I figure more of the situation out soon. Nizu said and Aizawa eraser head nodded his head but was concerned since it's rare to see the principal concerned about something. Nizu cleaned up the mess he made earlier and then headed back to his office since he would be waiting for all might to arrive. During that time though Nizu was not lacking in doing things as the message implied something really disturbing and he was sure all might would be once he heard of it. 
Niza dug into the camera around the old Midoriya apartment and looked as far back as he could and was in lock since the city Izuka Midoriya lived and keeps their video records for years. If the boy didn't contact us when he did then we would have lost this video which is showing troubling matters Nizu thought as he watched the video that spanned several weeks Nizu was greatly disappointed in the human he was watching on the cameras but they needed more proof than the video since it only showed the man arriving at the apartment multiple times. Soon though time passed and a knock at his door came. Nizu looked at the camera that was positioned outside his door and saw it was all might in his skinny form. Niza let him in and All Might sat down. I am glad you arrived as quickly as you could All Might have been reached out by what I am assuming is Izuku Midoriya. Nizu said and All Might's eyes widened and asked what the message was and why he sent it to Nizu instead of to him instead. Nizu nodded his head and spoke. Because he was working off likely limited information and needed to ensure it didn't end up in others' hands which I have an easier time doing with my skills in hacking and technology unlike you. Your protege if this indeed is him seems quite smart since he hacked into UA to deliver the message to my computer itself. Nizu said and All Might eyes widened even more if it was possible. Nizu then showed the transcript of the chat room that he had with the other party for All Might to read it. Nizu, hello, how may I help the individual who decided to hack my school? Nainsu, hello, Principal Nizu. Nizu who? That is an interesting name you have taken. Does it have any meaning and connection to why you decided to hack into my school? Nainsu, indeed it does however you know the true meaning of what Nainsu means. As such, can you pass a message on for me to ensure it doesn't get caught by nosy eyes and ears? Nizu, I can most certainly pass it on to who I believe you intend the message for. Nainsu, here is the message then. Nainsu, in an alley of BLD we met, you told me to trust the past and I did. Now it's your turn to trust the past and be guided to the future. Though be warned those formerly at your side sought the future in greed and caused harm so be wary of those you bring to seek the future or else you risk not being guided by the past. Nainsu, I hope my message can be delivered and trust well placed in Yunizu. Hopefully, you and he will understand the meaning I have placed in this message. Until we meet Principal Nizu, the other party has left. As you can see they knew information that only a limited number knew about. The alley in the BLD is where you met Izuku since your BLD was in the alley and you were injured. You told him to trust the past users and somehow he's implying they interact with him far more than they ever did with you since they only showed some ghost visuals to you before. Now the interesting part is that he is implying that they will guide you to him as he is the future due to him being the TH and you being the TH which is now in the past. Nizu said but All Might asked about the last portion of the message and Nizu wasn't smiling anymore as he sighed. From what I can gather it seems the message is about Sir Night Eye. I've looked up the video footage from that time and it shows Sir Night Eye made several stops at the Midoriya home over a span of a few weeks. I don't know what happened inside the home but it's troubling, to say the least with the message that Izuku Midoriya has provided us. Izuku is warning us from telling Sir Night Eye since Izuku is afraid of actions being taken by him from what I believe since he says we risk not being guided by the past users if we bring him. Nizu said and All Might sat back in the chair in disbelief at what he learned and saw on the cameras. None of Sir Night Eye's notes implied he made multiple visits to the Midoriya home which raised flags even in his mind. All Might asked who they should bring with them on this trip since they have zero clues where they are going right now. Nizu thought as well and asked if Eraserhead could be brought. The reason I want to bring him is if Izuku Midoriya does go to this school then I am placing Eraserhead in charge of his class since we don't know how good of control he has and Eraserhead can turn his quirk off. I would like to inform Eraserhead about the quirk as well since he would be more knowledgeable to stop the quirk and any screw-ups that happen but the choice is yours. Nizu said and All Might was going to decline to tell Eraserhead about the quirk when he felt a sudden urge to say yes. All Might froze when he was about to speak when his eyebrows turned into a frown and Nizu asked what was wrong. I was about to say no when I had a huge ug to say yes for some unknown reason, All Might said and Nizu ponders for a bit before speaking up. Is it possible it's one for all guiding you? The message did say they would guide you to the future so they might approve of him knowing. Try to say a random person like Endeavor needs to know and see what happens. 
Nizu said and as All Might thought of it, he had a huge ug that was screaming in his body that protested the decision as made him feel as if that was a horrible decision. All Might confirmed their theory and Nizu smiled at the implications that one for all was far more alive than they ever knew. After a bit more talking they decided to call Gran Torino, the detective, recovery girl, and Aizawa and scheduled a meeting in two hours since Gran Torino and the detective would need to travel to get to them. After the hours passed and All Might spent it thinking about the situation with Sir Knight, I, he really hopes the man had just caused a misunderstanding and didn't truly harm that each user of one for all because the more he thought about it the more he was at Sir Knight I. All Might always have believed the school records truly didn't accurately describe the boy he met in that alleyway all those years ago and he was right when they investigated Inco Midoriya and the school and was able to prove the files wrong. As such, the files were wiped clean but the boy needed a new formal education to see where he was truly at which could be done via some tests by Principal Nizu. Soon though the time passed and all parties invited were now in a meeting room. Gran Torino spoke up though. I was thinking this was about it and the boy but since we have a third party here that means it's not about that. Gran Torino asked and All Might shook his head. Actually it is. It's been decided to bring Eraserhead into the loop since he would be teaching the boy in his class when he attends UA since his quirk could stop OFA if we needed to since we have no idea of his current progress. All Might said shocking those that knew the truth and only confusing Eraserhead. Nizu asked if he should tell the story or would All Might want to do the job which he wanted to do it. As such, All Might explained the entire story of one for all and all for one then went on to talk about the boy he gave the quirk to. So you are telling me you gave a volatile quirk to a year old that could have killed him and had an ancient monster hunting the quirk down? Eraserhead asked while glaring at All Might who paled a bit. Yes, but I had no choice at the time since I thought I was going to die. All Might said as he dropped out of his buff form due to Eraserhead using his quirk which shocked Eraserhead at what he saw. Eraserhead keep this silent to the other staff. They will be informed about his state later on when he teaches here when Izuka Midoriya attends but not until closer to the time. Nizu said and Eraserhead nodded his head slowly as he was still shocked to see the number one pro hero like that. Anyway, we need to talk about the main issues All Might. Nisa said and All Might sighed and nodded his head which confused the others about what main issues but then Nisa showed the message on the screen. Eraserhead, earlier UA got hacked which this conversation happened. It seems Izuka Midoriya learned quite a lot on his own since he figured out how to hack the school and hide from me. Nizu said stunning eraser head and the room. Then the others asked about the dark message that was given and Nizu then played the video of Sir Night Eye. From what we can gather Sir Night Eye likely had a hand in forcing Izuka Midoriya on the run. He never made any notes about the multiple visits in the case files. The message also talks about greed which implies that Sir Night Eye was after one for all and somehow caused harm to the boy. We need to keep Sir Enitai out of the loop on this and get more information from the boy as well as question the mother about Sir Night Eye as well which the detective will do once we find the boy. Nizu said and everyone nodded their heads. Eraser head though was at Sir Night Eye and everything he was learning. He wanted to meet Izuka Midoriya who was the former corkless child who went through abuse and neglect at home and at school which reminded him so much of himself. Aizawa wouldn't admit it but he was glad he was trusted to be told this information and to join the trip. Eraserhead then asked how they were going to find the boy which Nizu spoke up. We know one for all is a bit more alive than first believed. It will lead us to Izuka Midoriya as the message implies so we just need to wait for the cork to. Nizu was saying but got cut off by All Might who spoke out quickly. Jero, All Might said out of nowhere which confused them all but Nizu believed he understood. Seems we are going to Jero then. Nizu asked and All Might nodded his head as he spoke. As you said that statement I had the urge to say Jero out of nowhere. I don't think I have ever been to Jero either so I wouldn't know why I would go there so it has to be one for all wanting us to go there. All Might said and they all nodded their heads and planned to leave for Jero. It was decided that even Recovery Girl would join them on the trip but might just stay in the city itself depending on where they are lead. 33rd POV. It was decided that they would drive to Jero and they took a large van that could fit up to people comfortably as they needed space to carry supplies like food, water, clothing and medical supplies that Recovery Girl demanded they bring. 
The reason she said this is because they had zero ideas what state they would find Izuka Midoriya in since he ran away at years old into the world on his own. As such, she wanted to be prepared to give him any medical care or basic needs if he was in a horrible state which reminded them all of the facts that the boy had survived years by himself in Japan without help. This made them all a bit worried about what state they would indeed find him in. After several hours of driving, they arrived in the city of Jero and Nizu noticed the train station was one of the possible stops Izuka Midoriya could have gone off at but Nizu never found footage since a lot of stations that day were under maintenance which made things strong. They soon stopped the car and looked towards All Might who shrugged before freezing and they all looked at him. Sleep I am for some reason getting the word sleep pushed to the front of my mind. All Might said as more of a question and they all wondered why the quirk wanted them to sleep before Recovery Girl spoke up. I think it might be due to how close it is to night time and look around you we are surrender by woods. I think that the boy isn't in Jero but this is the closest city to his location. I think he is deep in the woods somewhere which is why the quirk wants us to sleep since it would be a long journey to walk. Recovery girl said and they all paled at the thought of the boy surviving in the woods for so long but they accepted the fact that they needed to sleep. They were also debating on if they would take Recovery Girl due to her age since she couldn't move as fast as Gran Torino and the others. Gran Torino suggested bringing her still since they might need her. All Might could carry Recovery Girl, erase her head, and the detective in his form which can let us travel faster as I can lift Nizu since he is smaller. I could do one of the others but it would be easier for me to do him instead while All Might will have his full time limit of hours since he's been a decent idiot and not waste a lot of it since we needed to find the boy. Gran Torino said and they all nodded at this idea since any trip could be cut down due to their speed. Soon the next day arrived and they all woke up and ate breakfast since they didn't know how long they would be in the forest. After finishing they all got back in the car since they could still use it for a while and drove north as All Might felt it was the correct direction. They kept going north until there was no more road to drive on. It seems we will be traveling the rest of the way by foot, Nisa said and they all got out of the car and grabbed some of the supplies before locking the car. Soon they got the stuff on All Might's back and everyone got onto his back as well unlike Nizu who held onto Gran Torino's back and shoulders as they made a small device for him to stand on that went around Gran Torino's body. As such, they headed off and followed the urges that All Might received as they traveled for about minutes at their speed which wasn't as fast as All Might could go since he had to ensure Gran Torino could keep his eyes on him. Then suddenly All Might came to a sudden stop and they wondered why. The urges are telling me to just walk from here so I am going to power down and save my form since we should be close by. All Might said and they all nodded as they all decide to walk themselves and within a few minutes, they saw a home on the river that they arrived at. Well I will be the boy has been living in a home. Gran Torino said and All Might nodded his head. Indeed it appears so. The urges have stopped with the last one being the word here coming to my mind so this is the place. All Might said then Eraserhead spoke up and pointed out that there was a bridge up the river to cross it. They all moved towards it and you could see things were far older and then there were newer parts. This house may have been here long before so I wonder how he found it. The detective spoke up out loud as they walked towards the home. They stopped outside of it as they looked around. I wonder if he is inside or out in the forest somewhere. All Might pondered until they all heard someone behind them which made them all turn quickly. Thrump. I actually just arrived back here all might, said the voice and as they all turned around to face the voice they saw one Izuka Midoriya who was holding a damn tree. Imagine Izuka looks similar to this without the support gloves imagine Izuka looks similar to this without the support glove. Well, you are far healthier than we thought you would be. Gran Torino said and Izuka chuckled a bit as he put the tree down near the woodpile. How about you all come to join me inside since it's going to get cold soon as we are approaching winter more and more. Izuku said as he grabbed some firewood from the pile closer to the river and took some inside. They all followed him inside the home and looked around and saw it was pretty decent for being all the way out in the woods. How are you powering the home since you have electrical energy? I saw you had some solar panels but those are not enough for all of this. Nizu asked towards Izuku who nodded his head and showed them all the water mill that was in one room that went into the water. The water mill provides all of the energy but I was worried about a really bad winter which we did of last time which the river froze for the most part. 
As such, I had prepared batteries to store energy in them after the first winter here and made a solar panel that took some time. I can store about a month's worth of energy in the batteries but with the solar panels providing some energy it expands to a month and a half and if I reduce my usage I can get about two and a half months of energy which winter tends to be over by then and unfreezes the water enough for the mill to work. I don't need to worry about heat since I use the wood-burning stove to cook and heat the home. Izuku said as he showed the stove and put more wood into it to heat the home a bit hotter. Izuku then pulled some food out of the fridge and started some lunch since it was getting close to the time. Do you all want something to eat since I am hungry? Izuku asked and they said if he had some to spare then sure. Izuku chuckled at that and said he had more than enough to feed them all for months. The land here provides quite well. I have the river for fish and then I've hunted a deer a few months back which provided a lot of meat in the freezer. I also get berries and other things from the forest as well. If I really want something else I run into town near to get it but I tend to avoid town since I didn't want to be found. Izuku said and at that Grand Torino asked why Izuku didn't want to be found which made him freeze. Well multiple reasons but first does Eraserhead head know everything since I haven't bothered to look in the past few days to see if you all told him. Izuku said and that confused them all and Izuku chuckled but Eraserhead head confirmed he was told about the quirk and its history. Izuku nodded his head and then start to speak. First by what I meant is that as I am sure you are aware since you were able to get here is that one for all is alive in a way. The quirk copies echo of the past users and stores them inside the quirk. I am able to freely talk to them once I go to sleep or they can send me urges to confirm their will in a way during the day. It's how you got here. I can't look at All Might's memories like an echo can since he isn't dead nor can the current user do so. But the other echoes can pass the information from his half echo to me if they wish to which is how I know All Might hadn't betrayed me when Sir Night Eye did what he had done. Izuka said and at that point they all tensed and All Might really wanted to know the truth of all those years ago. Izuku could tell but he wasn't going to say it unless All Might outright asked. Izuku put the food down and at that moment All Might asked the question on all of their minds. Izuku can you please tell us what Sir Night Eye has done since you were quite clear in your message that he has caused you harm and was greedy for what we are assuming is one for all? All Might asked and Izuku nodded his head as he put his food on the table. Izuku looked at All Might and spoke. Many things had happened at first but let's start at the very beginning. After you passed the quirk to me it took me months for me to get enough muscle on my body to even activate the quirk but I could only control 50% after visiting a quirk doctor since I was an idiot and tried to use it only in one spot which hurt like hell. Weeks passed and I had registered the quirk as energy manipulation which in hindsight was a blessing in disguise that I named it that and I will explain later on why. Izuku said as he took a sip of his tea before starting again. Izuku then explained that Sir Night Eye had shown up at his home about two weeks or so after the visit to the Quirk Doctor and Registration Office. I am assuming that you told him my name at one point as you came out of your medical coma before going back under from what the past users have told me. This resulted in him having a large amount of time to hunt me down and start his plans. He had lied to my mother and explained that he was looking into a case from the city you fought all for one in. He lied to Inko Midoriya to get the room alone with me to interrogate me since he knew I had the quirk. He then said something was taken from All Might that I am tracking down to ensure it gets provided to a better suited individual if you know what I mean. And that meant several things in my mind since I doubted you knew he was there because if you wanted it back then you would have come to be yourself and not sent him. Izuku said and everyone was tense at what they were hearing and the detective was confirming it was all true which made All Might sick to his stomach or rather his lack of stomach. I played dumb with him since I had no idea if he knew the truth about the quirk or if he really was sent by you or not but that didn't go well as he decided to take drastic measures as he said listen here what you were given is meant to be a symbol and not a plaything so it doesn't seem fit for someone like yourself to keep a hold of what you were given. You can either agree to hand it over to someone I find more suitable to become the next vessel or I can take harsher measures. The choice is yours so decide now. But I don't know if he meant someone quirkless shouldn't have it or if he meant something else at the time. I think later on I believe it was due to my school records which are complete bullshit but I can't do anything about that. Izuka said and Nizu chimed in at that sand said they had the records cleared up since they investigated the school. 
This made Izuka happy since it meant he wouldn't have strong as a time to get into UA due to his records. Now at that point he was painted as a corkist in my mind and I still don't know if he is one or not. Anyway, I played dumb once again and pointed out that he had lied and was conducting an illegal interrogation of a minor since he had lied to Inko Midoriya to get me alone. He didn't like that as he stood up and told me I had chosen the rough method instead which was true as it was indeed rough Izuku said and they really didn't like the sound of what Izuku was saying and really hoped it didn't go down the route they thought it did. Izuku explained how Sir Night Eye revealed the truth somewhat to his mother about the quirk and that made them all widen at that fact. He came up with a story that I had stolen the quirk from you and placed the blame of you not making public appearances on me instead of all. For one injuring you. This made my mother drop her act of loving me and well things took a turn for the worst at that point. I know she was mentally and emotionally abusive but at that point, due to Sir Night Eye, she turned physically abusive as well. I tried to deny the claim but she had slapped me very strong as my head quickly turned and she did it right in front of him too as he just stood there doing nothing. I was then sent to my room and wasn't allowed to go to school as she started to starve me for days since I refused to hand the quirk over to Sir Night Eye who wanted it. Izuku said as a tear went down his face and All Might was furious at his old sidekick at this point. He knew the man didn't like Yusuke based on the school files but those were proven to be faked by the school but now to learn that the man knew about the abuse and did nothing enraged All Might and all of the others as well. That night after I was sent to my room without food is the same night one for all past users reached out to me since they saw the situation I was in, Izuku said and they all paid even more attention at that point. Izuku explained how they told him the entire story of one for all and all for one. Luckily they cleared your name All Might as Nana explained you had no one you intended to give the quirk to before you met me on that fateful day. She and the others also explained that you actually have zero right to ask for it back from me anyway since the quirk is mine now and the only condition for my usage is to use it for good. Izuku said shocking the room and All Might asked if Nana was doing good which Izuku confirmed. Izuku then explained that nearly every user expect All Might was chosen more of random luck as they all died at the hands of All for One except the fourth user who died of age since he had lived in seclusion to build the quirk up. Actually we are in the home of the fourth user. He's the one who built this house and he trained here. It's why I came out here since they were sure it should still have been standing and in somewhat decent condition as it was better than sleeping on the streets or dirt. Izuku said shocking them all that they were in the home of the fourth user of One for All. That confirmed how old the home was and explained why there were older devices like the wood-burning stove. Izuku then explained that the past users told him of All Might's condition and that Sir Night Eye was acting of his own will and not All Might's orders from what they knew. They then moved on to the topic after waking up as they wanted to see what Inko Midoriya would do but they had Izuku prepare all of his luggage beforehand to escape in a quick need which they all thought was smart of the past users to have Izuku do that. I also contained my education once I got to the forest. I will talk about that later but moving on to after I woke up. Inko asked if I decided to give back what I stole and I denied I stole anything which turned into being starved even more. Days passed until Sir Night Eye made another appearance and him asking for the quirk again which I refused and made the statement that it was ridiculous that anyone could take away a quirk so easily since I didn't want to admit I had the quirk from you. Sir Night I said I had no idea what I was dealing with and that I was being greedy which is ironic since I knew far more about the quirk than him at that point. Izuka said with a chuckle that made everyone laugh a bit as well. Then Izuku spoke about how Inko and Sir Night Eye talked about if there was anything she could do to make him give it up and she had him leave and return in a week to see the results. It was at that point she threatened to kick me out of the house if I didn't hand it over in that week's time but I had other plans as it was decided to run away. As such, when she went to work the next morning I grabbed all my bags, stocked all the food I could, and grabbed all of the money that I knew she had saved and bolted. I did the smart thing and ate a meal before running though since I needed the energy since I had been starved for days by that point. Izuku said and the detective kept confirming everything he said which only made the others at the actions of Sir Night Eye. Izuku then explained how he got to where he was at and they all nodded their heads and asked if there was anything more which he nodded his head at. This doesn't relate to Sir Night Eye all that much but it's about my training and education after I arrived over the years. The start was rough but I made my way through it all. 
I solely increased my control of the quirk from 50% to 50% then to 50% over time and so on. I repaired the bridge and the building and so on. I knew I lacked money so I did odd jobs for older elders in the town below since they wouldn't call the police on me and they always gave me some spare food when they could which made things easier. Izuku said and All Might had Nizu make a note to find all the families that helped Izuku so they could be rewarded for their care. Before you say anything against it, they didn't need to help you but did it. I think they should enjoy a bit more comfy lives which I can easily afford to give them money to cover anything they gave you and also help them secure their futures for the rest of their lives. I am extremely grateful for what they helped you with. All Might said as he saw Izuku looking as if he wanted to say something but stopped after All Might spoke. Izuku then explained that the past users helped him with his education at the start since they needed to figure out how to get him in a school or something. They also taught me combat lessons via the dreamscape which I then practice in the real world. After a while, we figured out a school to sign me up for. It's an international one that only requires proof of identity so I have my middle school and most of my high school done. I only have a semester left of my third year high school level classes which I should be able to finish before starting UA since the school was a self-paced one. Izuku said and then Nizu grinned at this which sent shivers down everyone's spines. Oh looks like I have a personal student now. Nizu commended and everyone paled a bit at the fact that Nizu was calling dibs on Izuku during school. All Might looked like he wanted to protest but he got a glare sent his way from Nizu that kept him silent. I did look into my missing person case but I saw Sir Naitai had control of it back then so I never bothered to look again in fear of tipping him off by poking around anyone that would have been connected to the case. Then we reached the bottleneck issue that forced a tie with all of the past users. Izuka said and they were all confused as Eraserhead what was the issue that the past users couldn't decide on. Izuku chuckled a bit before speaking. So, we don't know if All for One is truly dead so some that caused some issues but the main issue was if we should reach out to All Might or not. Now, the first user didn't vote nor was All Might's Echo allowed to vote since he wasn't fully there. I didn't vote since I was trusting them to make the main decisions back then for my safety since they all had years of experience and knowledge which I didn't. Izuku explained and they all nodded their heads while All Might pouted a bit about not getting a vote. Izuku then explained that they didn't want to risk Izuku going into Inko's care again and the situation at the time was livable so they decided to stay as it was. It explained that this had happened before they got him enrolled in school as well. By the time the conversation arrived again, it had been six months that had passed. The first user decided to voice his view on the matter to break the tie. It was decided the conditions that I was allowed to reach out to All Might on my own were to gain control of 50% of the quirk since it would provide me a defense in the off chance All for One was still alive. Otherwise, we would wait until it was near time for UA to reach out to All Might. Izuku said and Gran Torino asked if he has gained 50% control of One for All which Izuku chuckled a bit at. I actually would nearly have 50% controlled likely by now but an incident occurred with One for All. Izuku said as he started to float in the air which made Gran Torino and All Might shocked. The others in the room were astonished and freaked out the moment Izuku started to show the other quirks, as well as a black WHP, came out. I got all of the quirks from the past users which took up a lot of time in training with just one for all. This resulted in me slowing down in my progress but I did obtain 50% control of one for all recently as well. I have decent control of all of the quirks as well. Izuku said as he listed each quirk that he now had which made Nizu just grin out of control. Well as you said you were indeed blessed to have named it energy manipulation since we can explain away all of your quirks through it. Nizu said and Izuku smiled and nodded his head as well since the other quirks are not visible except the missed one when in use. As such, everything can be explained away as him manipulating his quirks energy. Izuku then powered the quirk down and Eraserhead asked how good he was in combat and Izuku shrugged. I don't know for sure since I only had myself and the past users to train within the dreamscape which doesn't translate the best to my real body. I know for a fact with all my quirks I can hold my own quite easily but I also like to be able to hold my own without a quirk so I know a lot of martial arts but haven't had an actual person to train with. Izuku said and Eraserhead told him to go outside and they would do a quick spar. 
Everyone moved outside and Izuku leads them to a more open area where he had cut down a lot of trees and removed the stumps as such the land was flat and clear. Eraserhead then started to attack Izuku who dodged the attacks and counterattacked. Izuku and he kept going at each other without anyone really gaining an upper hand in the fight until suddenly Izuku pulled a hidden weapon out of nowhere and held it to Eraserhead's neck. Seems to be my win Eraserhead as villains never play fair so why should I hold back? Izuku said and Eraserhead smirked. They both heard back to the group and Nizu asked for Eraserhead's assessment of how well Izuku did. I didn't go full out but I didn't really hold back either. I took him as a serious opponent that I would come across in the field and used a good portion of my strength without my capture gear. Izuka did make some mistakes in his fighting style but that is due to not having an actual person to fight against which will go away with the experience. Overall, he could take all of the third years down in a fight and take a large number of them at the same time likely. Do remember he didn't use his quirks either which puts him in a whole different league as well. Aizawa said and All Might was really proud of his successor for the training he had completed under the guidance of the past users. They all soon entered the home again and sat down since they decided to stay the night before heading back into town the next morning as Yusuku still needed to pack his belongings. 33rd POV Izuku went to sleep that night and found himself in the dreamscape of one for all. He looked around and saw the past users all talking as he walked towards them. They looked at him and congratulated him on completing his survival training. The conversation soon moved into what he would be doing when he returned as they believed either Eraserhead, All Might, or Nizu would take custody of him since Inko Midoriya was arrested already. Izuka didn't know who he would want to go within all honestly. He wouldn't mind living with All Might but wondered if the man could care for others in the state he was in which the users agreed with. Izuka thought about having Nizu take custody and just staying at UA if a home could be built in one of the forest areas that they have on campus which the users chuckled at since Izuku had adapted so much to live on his own in the forest. They also started to work on a design for Izuku's hero outfit. Izuku in all honestly didn't want to be as grand as All Might was. He wanted to be a mix between underground work and limelight work in all honestly as he could do both with the set of quirks he had but he still wouldn't directly hide like Eraserhead attempts to do so. As such with the combined knowledge between them all they started a rough design of the hero outfit and came up with a design that would be eye-catching but also useful for staying hidden. Though it was time to wake up and Izuku decided he would start drawing it in reality so the others could see and give their viewpoints on it. Izuku found himself awake and he looked around the house and noticed only Eraserhead was awake currently as the others were still asleep. You really don't sleep much like I thought Eraserhead, Izuku said with a chuckle while the man rolled his eyes. Izuku offered him coffee and the man raised an eyebrow and asked if he really had some. Yeah, I've bought coffee beans from town a few times. I don't treat a lot of it but it has helped wake me up some days when I needed them. Izuku said as he got the beans out and started to make some coffee. He also made some teas as well for Nizu and those that didn't want to drink the coffee. Soon they were done and placed on the warmers to keep them hot as people woke up. Eraserhead took some coffee and was surprised at how well it was and asked for the brand name. Izuku gave him the empty bag since he used the last of what he had. Izuku then sat down with some paper and coloring tools and started working on his outfit design. Nizu had woken up and was behind Izuku watching before he spoke up. Is that the hero outfit you are wanting? Nizu asked and Izuku nodded his head and confirmed. I don't want to be exactly like All Might as he was a sole pillar holding society up. In all honestly, I will likely hold myself back to allow for the illusion of people being closer than they really are if I ever got to the number one spot but I also aim to do underground work as well since I have quirks that are perfect for it. I want to be a blend between the two but I don't plan to hide as Eraserhead does in avoiding the media. I will allow myself to rise in the ranks as it happens but not focus solely on limelight work. Izuku said and Eraserhead was interested in what the outfit was looking like and was impressed with what he saw. Overall it was a decent outfit for doing both sides of the field as it was eye-catching but it would also blend quite well in at night time due to the color scheme. Asterisk ignore the badge thing and the arm to the side. Asterisk All Might had woken up and heard the conversation and wanted a look at the outfit. Oh, it looks quite nice. All Might said as he nodded his head. Izuku thanked him with a smile on his face before finishing the work. Overall, 
I don't need much actual support gear to help me tame. One for all since I have 50% of it under control. I just need the outfit made to withstand the sheer power I would put off and have some self-repairing around the wrists due to black WHP coming out from my wrists. For gear, I would like knives to throw and a Kodachi that is hidden in the outfit since I am pretty good with blades and I've learned about the human body quite a lot to know where to hit for a fatal blow or not to. Izuku said and they all nodded their heads and Nazu said he would have it arranged and in the meantime, they could get him certified to use the weapons before UA starts. Ah, about you where am I living since sorry all might but the past users and I agree that you aren't really in a good health state to care for another person even though we know you would really love to adopt me. I still care for you as a parent regardless since the past users have shown me how much you care about me. Izuku said and All Might sighed as he admitted that it would indeed be strong for him to care for Izuku in his state. Before Eraserhead could speak up Nizu grinned and spoke. Why you could come under my care. I live on the UA campus and I am sure you would enjoy my home since it is located in one of the forests on campus. Nizu said with glee and Eraserhead glared at his boss. Izuku chuckled and told Eraserhead he could have half custody if he wanted which caused Nizu to frown a bit, but Izuku reminded him that he was getting him as a personal student since he was done with most of his high school education which made Nizu smirk again. Though everyone else was shivering a bit due to the smirk and wish Izuku didn't remind the principal about that fact. Soon Izuku got started on packing everything up and the others helped. Izuka made sure to put the fire out by spraying it with water to ensure it didn't restart without anyone there. He also pulled the water mill out of the water and secured everything else such as the solar panel as it was detachable and could be moved inside the home. Izuku asked everyone to not speak about the location of the home since he could use it as a safe house in the future for whatever reason or a future user could use it as well if something ever repeated like this. They all agreed and soon they made their way back to the city which was easier this time since they had Izuku who could carry Gran Torino and Nizu while All Might carried the others. As such, they both quickly moved out of the forest in under a few minutes due to their speed and found the car that they had left parked. They put everything in the car and they were glad to have gotten a bigger car since it easily fits all of Izuku's luggage that he had gained over the years. So what are you all doing about Sir Night Eye? Izuku and he felt the mood in the car drop. To be honest I don't know there is a risk of him opening his mouth about the quirk which would prove troubling however, it's clear that he can't be trusted with secrets anymore. All Might said as the man honestly didn't know what to do. Nizu then spoke up with an idea. I say we wait and see what he does with the fact that Izuku is back. If Sir Night Eye tries to approach Izuku then we block his attempts. If he makes any statements about you not being a worthy TH user or something then we bring up the fact that he shouldn't be a hero anymore for his crimes he committed as a hero. As long as he stays away then it should overall be a fine until we can figure something out in regards to the man because I doubt he would agree to have his memories wiped of one for all if we even found someone capable of that. Nizu said and they all nodded their head and Izuku accepted it since he really didn't care as long as the other heroes knew of what the man did since his reputation with them was now destroyed which made Izuka happy in all honestly. Izuku would hate for such a good quirk that Sir Night Eye has to not be put to use to save people so this worked for now. I'll accept that unless he does something. The quirk is useful to save people and is really the only thing he has going for him since he has a shitty personal character. I really didn't like him after learning he ended the partnership with All Might due to his stupid vision since the future isn't set in stone and it's only the highest probability that he is likely seen. Izuku said and Nizu asked for more details on why Izuku thought of it like that. Izuku explained that every human is making a different reaction and if enough people make a different reaction then the future would start to change. The further out Sir Night Eye saw the more obscured it would have been since many different actions would have changed. Example is me because if he saw the future a 50% unbreakable future then he should have known where to find me since All Might came to get me but yet he made no attempts to come to get me, Izuka said and they all widened their eyes a bit at that and nodded their heads since that was true. If Sir Night Eye did see an unchangeable future then why didn't he find Izuku already? Though all those thoughts were put aside as they contained their drive towards UA, which was a few hours out. Recovery Girl wanted Izuku in her office once they arrived at UA so she could give him a complete medical overview to make sure he wasn't missing anything from his diet due to being in the woods for so long which he agreed to. 
Nizu said that they would close the case about his missing but would try to keep it on the down low to not raise any suspicions with Sir Night Eye. After a few hours passed they had arrived back at the school and classes were already out for the day which only left the staff on campus. As such, there was no one to stop and see Izuku since they quickly moved him into the nurse's office so recovery girl could start her medical checkups which included BLD work and everything else. Nizu said he would have drones take the luggage to the house on campus while he and Eraserhead got to work with the detective on paperwork for his custody to be transferred to them since Inko Midoriya lost hers when she was arrested. Izuku nodded his head and soon it was just him, recovery girl, and all might left alone in the nurse office. Man it feels weird to be back in society again after being cut off from everyone else for so long with only the internet to communicate. Izuku said and All Might chuckled and nodded his head. Indeed, but you did amazing in surviving for so long on your own. I am so proud of you my boy. Now I did have a question on if you wanted to do the recommendation exam or take the actual one. All Might asked and Izuku asked who would recommend him and All Might said he would or Nizu likely would depending on Izuku's preference. Can I take some time to think about it? If I went with the recommendation exam then it draws a lot of attention onto me so I want to just relax for now and adjust back into some form of society until it's a bit closer to time to make that decision. Izuka said and asked which All Might nodded his head and said he wouldn't need a decision until it was closer to the end of the current school year. Izuku nodded his head and soon recovery girl cleared him to go. I will have all the BLD work back in a few hours later tonight. I will send everyone the notes on them so we know what he needs to be healthy or if he is already healthy. Otherwise for now he is clear to go. Recovery girl said and they thanked her as they headed towards Nizu's office. She waved them off as they closed the door behind them. 33rd POV Izuku and All Might made their way towards Nizu's office when Izuku decided to speak up. Hey All Might can I call you Toshi like Nana does in the dreamscape? Izuku asked catching All Might off guard and froze for a second. Izuku thought he screwed up and tried to backtrack but All Might stopped him. It's fine it's just I haven't heard that nickname in so long that it caught me off guard for a moment. All Might said as he turned and looked at Izuku in the eyes. I would be so happy if you called me that my boy. All Might said as he patted Izuku's hair and soon they arrived at Niza's office and walked in as the door just opened right away without them knocking. Izuku chuckled when he saw that and wanted to rise to Nizu's chaotic evilness. I wonder if he will teach me his ways. Izuku thought as a shiver went down All Might's back and Nizu looked up with a grin as if he felt a wonderful thought being made by someone in connection to him. Please sit down both of you. <laughs> Nizu asked and Izuku accepted some and asked if Nizu made his own tea or did he buy prepackaged tea. Ah, most of the time I make my own tea if I can help it. Some of it comes repacked since there is no choice but to make them like that but mostly I buy the actual tea leaves and make it myself. Nizu said and Izuku asked if he could teach him later on since he only was able to figure out the basics but failed before. Nizu had a huge grin while Erase Red groaned and muttered that there were two of them now which made both Nizu and Izuku grin at the same time as they drank their tea almost at the same time. Anyway moving on. We've closed your missing person's case without much trouble and kept it on the down low. Now we are almost finished with the legal paperwork to put you in Mai and Aizawa's custody. We just need signatures from you Izuku and we will be done as long as the courts approve of it which I will have favors pulled by myself and all might to ensure no one argues against it. Nizu said and Izuku signed the paperwork that was put in front of him and after about half an hour they were finished. Izuku asked if he was allowed to use the gyms on campus since he needed to continue pushing his limits of one for all. I was wondering if I can use the gym on campus or something since I want to keep pushing OFA limits since I still have about a year and a half or so before the entrance exams for when I would apply. I want as much control as I can get. Izuku asked and Nizu said he could but would need to surrender any equipment to classes if a class were to come into a gym instead of individual students. At that, All Might spoke up and proposed an idea. My boy, there is a beach that is covered in trash that I would like you to clean up. It could help work different parts of your body and do community service as well. It should take you about months of work in your current body condition. All Might proposed and Izuku thought it over before nodding his head and agreeing to do it since he would like to give back to the community as well. 
Niza though had some other plans in mind like getting Izuku's a provisional license if possible before he started at UA. The reason for this was due to how well he did against Aizawa in their spar but Nizu had ways to show Izuku's abilities overall in a little test he was thinking of but that was for later. Soon they decided it was time to show Izuku his new home so Nizu had the detective take the paperwork and go file it while Nizu took Izuku to the home he would be living in from now on. It was about a minute walk in the forest of the campus. As long as you're on campus then you have my full permission to use your quirk as you wish even when you become a student since I want to see the chaos you would create? Nizu said which her head groaned about. Soon they arrived at Nizu's campus home and Izuku was in shock at how it looked as it was a decent size home. Soon they arrived at Nizu's campus home and Izuku was in shock at how it looked as it was a decent size home. Nice home you have Nizu, nice home you have Nizu. Though how do you get to the stuff above your height? Izuku asked as he looked around the place when a miniature vehicle thing moved around and Nizu got on it as it extended into the air so he could grab things from high up places. Izuku felt like he wanted to laugh but knew better to laugh at Nizu since that was a way to ask for a painful death. Interesting, I figured you would have had a drone or something to do that, Izuku said, and right as he said that a drone flew into the room and got something from the other side of the room and Nizu laughed at Izuku's deadpan expression. Soon the others left since it was getting late in the day but a few hours later recovery girl sent everyone a text message telling them about Izuku's physical health. Overall it came back clean and he just needed to eat a slightly more balanced diet since he was low on some vitamins in his body which were to be expected since they were things he lacked most of the time in the forest and only got from the food he bought in the stores since most of it came from fruit or other things which didn't grow in the forest. Nizu provided Izuku some tablets of the vitamins for the night and said lunch rush would start making him meals moving forward during the day when they weren't in the house where they would cook. Izuku asked Nizu if he could send him all the updated contact information when Nizu just pulled out a brand new phone instead and gave it to Izuku. That has all of the contact information and a new number. We don't need Sir Night Eye tracking the old one. Nizu said and Izuku nodded his head as he sat on the couch. Then Izuku remembered about his old school and more importantly Bakugo Katsuki. Nizu whatever happened to the people from my old school and I am more focused on Katsuki Bakugo who used to be my childhood friend but extremely bullied me due to me being quirkless which he didn't stop even when I received one for all and had it registered? Izuku asked and Nizu looked it up on his computer since it had been a while since he had to think about those people from Izuku's past. After a few minutes, Nizu provided Izuku with the information. Bakugo had the bullying events put on his record but as long as he didn't start anything after that he has a chance of getting into the school depending on his performance in the exam. He will though be required to take anger management classes and therapy if he shows any signs of aggressiveness towards classmates at UA. Other people had the same conditions applied but I doubt any of them would get into UA anyway with their grades. Do you want me to ensure Bakugo gets put in B since you are going to end up in A since that is the class eraser head teaches? Nizu asked and Izuku shook his head. Nah, if he does good enough to go in there then I know Eraser Head won't take CRP from him. Anyway, if things are going to go as I think they will I will barely have classes with him since I believe you will have me as a private student. Izuku said and Nizu smirked and nodded his head. Indeed. On that note, we need you to finish your high school classes as soon as possible so you will be completely free and I want you to obtain a teaching certificate as well for some of my plans to work. Nizu said and Izuku nodded his head as he pulled his laptop out and got to work. Nizu though pulled his out as well and got to work on other things as well since they had been gone for a few days to find and locate Izuku. As such, some paperwork had piled up for his job. 33rd POV a few days had passed and Izuku had agreed to meet All Might at the beach where they would be training at. Izuku changed into some workout clothes and took a small bag with drinks and energy bars so he could refresh himself when he took some breaks. After about a minute jog from UA early in the morning before the students had arrived on campus, he made his way towards the beach. Once he arrived after the minute run he looked over the beach and nodded his head at what he saw. They really did let this beach go to waste with all of this trash Izuku said out loud to no one in particular when he heard All Might's voice from behind him. Indeed my boy. The city had failed to maintain the beach and now it has become an illegal dumping site since some trash had washed up on the shore many years ago. All Might said as Izuku turned to face him. 
Izuku greeted him and they both looked over the trash beach together and started to talk about how he was going to be cleaning it. Izuku greeted him and they both looked over the trash beach together and started to talk about how he was going to be cleaning it. Overall, start small and move upwards but also do some bigger things as well. I think with your current condition you could clean this all in 5 months time which does include you doing other things half of the day like finishing your high school education. Niza told me he wants you to get a teaching certificate and I am working on mine as well. I think he may have you help me teach my class since I will be teaching heroics, All Might said and Izuku nodded his head since he remembers something about that being mentioned by Nizu very late last night right before he went to sleep. Izuku though had a question about All Might's OFA. Hey, Toshi, how much is your limit right now? Izuku asked and All Might understood the question and he was silent for a second before looking out at the sea through the small window in the trash. As it stands I have about hours total left. It would have been likely less but I conversed as best as I could since I needed to find you no matter what. Though I can feel it slipping away by the time you start at UA, I likely will have hours most likely or something like that as long as I keep conversing my energy as best as I can. All Might said and Izuku nodded his head. Soon Izuku got to work on the trash pile as he followed along with the plan that All Might had put out for him. Overall it was a mixture of moving the garbage most of the time and then a set routine that was a bit harsher than the one Izuku was already doing. All Might had arranged for a dumpster to be placed on the street since he knew Izuku was going to make fast progress with the amount of cleanup. As such, a normal pickup truck would be wasteful in gas since he would need to make a large number of trips between the beach and the dump so a dumpster was a far better solution and a truck would come and pick it up every afternoon since All Might didn't care about the expense. Izuka decided to ask more questions to All Might like what was his favorite thing to do in his pastime and All Might said it was to watch old cartoon shows from long ago. A lot of cartoons now these days have me in them, I don't really want to watch myself all of the time since that is just freaky. Watching the really old cartoons from before Quirks came around is quite nice. All Might said and Izuku nodded his head. When I was still quirkless I used to watch all of those old shows and just dream of getting a quirk or figuring a way out to replicate the technology so I could become a hero as well. Ironically, I kind of got it in a similar way that Spider-Man did but instead of being bitten I was given via BLD which honestly wasn't as bad as I thought it would be since I didn't really notice that you had done it until much later on since I was in shock at the sight before me during those times. Izuka said and All Might chuckled and apologized for forcing the life he did on him all that time ago. Izuku waved it off. I'm glad you did it. Indeed, I would have liked to be a quirkless hero but I can do so much more with the powers I have unlocked. I can advocate for so much change far more than I could any other way. Also, would I really have a dad zoo, dad zua, and a dad might to help me beat people up or come up with crazy plans? Izuku said with a smirk and all might rolled his eyes and shrugged. Who knows? You were likely going to do crazy stuff regardless, so I wouldn't be surprised if Nizu somehow got his hands on you with those analysis books of yours. All Might said as he felt a shiver down his back and figured Nizu knew he was talking about him somehow. While he said that Nizu broke out into a wide smile in his office since he felt as if someone was talking in fear of him. Oh, I enjoy making the humans fear me. Nizu thought before sipping his tea and going back to work. Soon the day started to come to an end and Izuku looked over what he had accomplished. Overall there was a decent sized dent in the trash he was working on since he was already in an extremely good physical condition to begin with but this training on the beach would only make his muscles even more firmer and compact. They decided to call it a day as Izuku headed back to UA since the students would be off campus already which meant they wouldn't see him. Izuku wanted to avoid getting seen by anyone and especially the current second-year student Lemillion who was a work-study at Sir Night Eye's agency. Nizu had warned Izuku about him and told him to avoid the boy if he could since he might have learned something from Sir Night Eye but they don't know if he has or not. Izuku agreed with the assessment and agreed to avoid the second-year student if he could do so. Lumilan Akimirio Togata had an interesting quirk called permeation that was a weak quirk but grown into being a strong one with his fighting style. Izuka sat down on the couch after showing and changing clothing. How was the training? Nizu asked as he came up to the couch and jumped on it. Izuku shrugged a bit. It was indeed a decent workout. 
I can see why All Might wants me to clean it more than just it being a community service project since it does work a lot of my less worked muscles that wouldn't get worked in a gym most of the time. I already filled the dumpster up once so I am glad he is having it picked up once every day or else I would overfill it. Izuku said and Nizu nodded his head as he was glad the training and community service were being beneficial for Izuku's training. They soon started to eat dinner as Nizu asked him if he wanted to do some educational work in regards to learning to better hack. Izuku smiled and nodded his head as he quickly finished eating dinner since he wanted to get started on those types of lessons. He was also making strong headway in the remaining portions of his high school education since the classes were self-paced. As such, Izuku had used any free time outside of other things to eat away at the work and he knew he could have it done in a few months most likely since he only spent so much time each day working on it. If he spent dedicated days on it then he could have it done in less than a month probably but again that would require full dedicated days with nothing else in the way for the entire time which he didn't have right now with the other training and things going on. 33rd POV Months have passed since Izuku had started cleaning up the beach. And it was nearly done. However, many things have happened over the months that had passed. Firstly, Izuka had his name changed from Izuka Midoriya to Izuku Yagi as he no longer wanted to be called Midoriya anymore. The reason he went with Yagi over Aizawa or Nizu was that Nizu really didn't have a last name and Aizawa already had partial custody. Izuku wanted All Might to be connected more to him as well so taking his name on with permission of course was what Izuku decided to do since no one really knows the last name Yagi except those connected to All Might himself. As such, it will help keep him protected overall. Aizawa's name would have kept him protected as well but Izuku wanted Toshi to feel more involved with Izuku's life since he was voted against by the past users in caring for Izuku. All Might had broken down in tears the day that Izuku had asked that and had accepted without even thinking about it. Izuku smiled greatly that day as well. However, moving forward on the other topics as well. Izuku had accepted taking the recommendation exam from All Might but had no intentions of revealing who recommended him as he wanted to build up his own name before he was associated with All Might slash which All Might agreed with. They had informed Nizu of this decision who accepted it. Nizu knew Izuku would pass regardless due to his overwhelming power with his quirks and without his quirks. As such, this meant only recommendation spots were open in his mind and he's received quite a few applications from all different types of people but he knew he did receive one from the number 2 hero endeavor for his youngest child Shudo Todoroki. There were some others from notable families like the Ida family or Yayorozu family which was a very rich family. Nizu wondered who the other three people would be that would conquer the recommendations exam but shrugged since that was still a bit away. Now moving on to other things as it is about months after Izuku had been picked up from the forest and Nizu had decided to schedule a sparing session with little rules between All Might and Izuku. Nizu wanted to see how Izuku did compare to All Might in combat so they all gathered up at Training Ground Beta which was a fake city recreation that they used for the entrance exams and prepared to watch All Might and Izuku go at it. Before they walked out to the field, All Might decided to ask how much control Izuku had of one for all due to all of the training he had done at the beach. The people that knew about the quirk were interested as well in how much control he had gained in the short fourth months and Izuku smiled when he was asked. When we left the forest I was at 50% plus the other aspects. Now, I sit at 50% which means I have gained 50% in the past fourth months which isn't surprising since I was already toned and healthy. The training on the beach is helping build of those less known muscles which has done wonders for my control since I am spreading the quirk across all of my muscles which includes those. Izuku said and All Might smiled greatly as he nodded his head. Overall, Izuku had been doing an amazing job in his training and looks to be on track to have almost all of one for all under control before his first year of school which means he would just need to focus on all other heroic aspects of his training. Soon both of them stepped out into the fake city and Izuku right away called in the mist to condense in the area of the fight. Izuku's control and usage of the mist quirk had gotten pretty good and he was now at the point that he could spread it out and use it within a mile radius around himself which was honestly far more than Izuku thought he would ever need in hero work but useful regardless if he ever needed to make a quick escape for some god-awful reason. 
All Might tensed when he saw the mist coming in and decided to try using the air produced by his punches to try pushing most of the mist away but the mist just kept coming back every time he did it. Quite a good job my boy. The mist would definitely make people tense up when they see it as it will likely become a common indicator that you are in an area the more popular you become. All Might said as he suddenly dodged to the side as Izuku came from his backside out of the mist and tried to land a punch but All Might grabbed his arm and attempted to throw him. However, the moment All Might tried to throw him, Izuku suddenly disappeared into the mist. What? You can even do that when someone has a grip on you. All Might asked out loud since they didn't know he could do that since this is the first time he's been using his quirks in an actual fight. The spar back in the forest with Eraser Head had no quirks involved in their fight so everything Izuku was doing was brand new to them. All Might heard a chuckle in the mist around him and felt a shiver go up to his spine as he saw something come from his right and he dodged backward but he then noticed what was coming towards him was just a knife that Izuku uses. That is when All Might received a kick to his uninjured side and got sent into a building. Izuku had forced All Might to instinctively respond to the threat of the blade and forced him back into the kick which connected. All Might soon jumped out of the building and tried to grab Izuku who just dodged the attack and went for a punch towards All Might who blocked it. Your 50% is really powerful. I have to go 50% to not get pushed backward. All Might said as he powered up more and quickly slammed Izuku into the ground before he could move back into the mist. However, Right as Izuku's body slammed into the ground he had black come out of his wrists and they attacked All Might who jumped away but got grabbed by one. All Might forcibly broke free by using 50% and then charged Izuku who had jumped into the air and was using float to stay in the air instead of coming back down. This boy is downright scary with all of these quirks backing him up. I kind of hold some pity for any of the villains that will face him. All Might thought as he did a punch upwards to attack Izuku with wind pressure. Izuku just tanked the wind pressure though and decided to pull out his short blade, Kodachi, and All Might was confused on why his protege was pulling that weapon out until he saw what Izuku had started to do. Izuku lifted the blade at an angle and then powered up one for all which unknown to everyone on how he did it but the green arcs of lighting from him moved onto the blade as well which shocked All Might who decided to take cover. Izuku swung the sword and once he did it the lighting from the quirk came off the blade and carved into the ground wiping out a handful of buildings but making a massive scar in the ground due to the lighting and wind pressure that came off the blade. Holy Super C! All Might said as he pushed himself out of the rubble from the building he hid in. You could see All Might muscles clenching up since he got hit by the lighting a bit so he was being affected by it as well. Though the match still wasn't over as Izuku put the blade away and quickly dropped down to All Might and landed a kick right on his crossed arms which shoved All Might down into the ground a bit but before All Might could react, Izuku quickly twisted his body with float and the reflex quirk and grabbed All Might and tossed him. Though Izuku was unlucky as well since All Might grabbed Izuku as he was being tossed and held on which brought Izuku with him flying into a building that came down after they crashed through it and into Anto Air Building. Both of them made their way out of the rubble and you could see BLD coming down All Might's head a bit since he had some wounds and Izuku was exhausted since they had been fighting for about minutes now. I must say, old man that this is so exciting and we need to do this more often. Izuku said with a grin and All Might laughed a bit since he indeed wanted to do this again as well in the future if he still had the time to do it with his form. All Might and Izuku charged towards each other and threw away all other tactics as they just entered a slugfest as they exchanged blows between each other. They were both laughing as they kept going with only their fists and one for all backing them up. After about another minutes, Izuku fell to his knees as he was breathing strong due to the extended quirk usage and fighting. Izuka hasn't really had to deal with fighting that long nor using his quirk for an hour almost but All Might wasn't in any better condition either as he was breathing strong and looked like he would need to stop soon. It's clear that we are going to need to stop so I guess we should go for one last punch to decide the winner. Izuku asked and All Might nodded his head. Both of them jumped away from each other and Izuku started up float and all of his other quirks that could be used for a physical fight all at once. I am putting everything I got into this old man. Izuku yelled as he pushed his limits and moved from 50% to 50% of one for all. All Might nodded his head and was prepared to use a 50% punch since he couldn't risk going over since it would shorten his time limit. 
Both of them waited for a moment to strike, and then suddenly some rubble from one of the broken buildings fell and made a noise which broke the tension between them and sent them charging at each other. Izuku was using float to help boost his speed, black to cover his arm to add more damaging effects, his reflexes quirk to help aim and move better, and then one for all at 50%, and the closer he got the more he smiled just as All Might was doing as both of their smiles widened even more due to the thrill of the fight. However, before they collided Izuku suddenly used the reflexes quirk and changed the trajectory of his fist to go under All Might's attack and land a blow to his stomach to the side to ensure he didn't hit the wound. Izuku had also expelled Black WHP which forced All Might to go flying backward even more. All Might went flying across the city and landed in the wall that surrounded the training grounds. The buzzer went off ending the spar and Izuku quickly made his way to All Might to see how he was. Izuku was shocked when he arrived and found All Might holding his stomach and was laying on the ground. Can you help me to recovery girl? I think we broke some of my ribs, she is going to be, All Might said with a bit of fear of the old lady. Izuku nodded his head and gently grabbed his MSTR with the quirk and flew off towards the control room since Recovery Girl would be there. After a few minutes, you could find Recovery Girl healing All Might who had dropped to his skinny form and looked horrible in his state. You too need to be careful. You broke half of your ribs. Recovery Girl said as she smacked Izuku with her cane and glared at him as he apologized. All might just laugh a bit though which earned him some looks. I went 50% nearly that entire time. I of course didn't go over 50% like I could if I were to perform the United States of Smash but I I lost. I lost to my successor who only has 50% under his control. Dear God, just imagine what he can do when he hits 50% with more battle experience. All Might said with a huge grin since he was proud of his protege. It was at that moment that they all realized the implications of that the undaunted symbol of peace had just been beaten by someone who wasn't even close to their prime. The implications of that were huge and it solidified the decision in Niza's mind on his next steps. 33rd POV. Several weeks had passed and Izuku was finally done with the beach. He stood there on the empty beach as he texted All Might that he was finished with the beach and his MSTE or said he would come down to see it and he was proud of his strong work. After about minutes All Might arrived at the beach to find Izuku sitting in the sand and All Might looked across it all and was truly stunned at the beauty of the beach. It was also early in the morning with the sun rising as well which cast an amazing glow over the shoreline. Izuku my boy. All Might called out and moved towards Izuku who had turned around and waved at his um. Izuku my boy. All Might called out and moved towards Izuku who had turned around and waved at his uh. I am so proud of what you've accomplished here on this beach. What percentage are you able to control now? All Might asked to see if there was an increase since the spar. Izuku nodded his head and turned one for all on for a few moments before speaking. I can push to 50% of OFA without any problems. During our fights, I had used 50% in the last blow but it did sting to use it but now there aren't any stinging issues. Izuka said and All Might nodded his head as he sat down on the beach which his protege. They both sat in silence for a few moments before All Might decided to speak up. My boy I know we didn't meet under the best circumstances and I forced an entire burden on you without your consent. I wish we could have met under better conditions and I had the chance to offer you the quirk and the burdens it came with instead of literally forcing it down your throat. However, what I'm trying to get at that you are the best person I could have ever run into that day or any other day as you have shown time and time again why you are the th user of one for all. I am extremely proud of you and I know the past users are likely as proud as I am. All Might said as he hugged Izuku who was now crying and telling All Might it was okay and that he didn't regret getting the quirk since it leads to a better life overall for him. Soon they stopped their crying and wiped their eyes when Izuku's phone ranged as it was a message from Principal Nizu. Nizu says he wants us both at UA since he knows we are done with the beach, Izuku said and they wondered how the principal knew about the beach being cleaned. Izuku shrugged and suggested that Nizu likely hacked a camera nearby them to watch. All Might shivered at the powers of the principal but agreed that they should hurry back to UA. As such, after a short drive in All Might's truck, they arrived at the school and made their way into the school to find the principal waiting in his office. Izuku was about to knock when it just opened up and they walked in like normal. Good job on the beach. However, 
I call you here due to one of my plans coming to fruition. Congratulations Izuku Yagi on being approved to become a provisional hero. Nizu said as celebratory poppers went off and surprised them. All Might ended up coughing some BLD and Izuku looked shocked and then concerned as he tried to help All Might with the BLD. Soon they calmed down and asked what Nizu meant and what was he planning. Well, I may have been in talks with the commission about my adopted son who was the protege of All Might and that said protege had successfully defeated the symbol of peace in a spar which resulted in them approving of a provisional license being granted with some conditions of you needing to attend a hero school with you. Other conditions include starting a work-study ASAP since they want you out in the field already gaining more experience since you could help build up support for heroes. Nizu said with a grin. Izuku studied his adoptive father for signs of something else being planned and decided to outright ask what he was hiding. What are you hiding? Izuku asked and the smirk only grew bigger which didn't seem like a good thing in their minds. I knew there was a reason I adopted you. You are correct as there is more reason. One reason is Sir Night Eye has been bugging me to try and recommend his work study to All Might to replace you. Niza said and All Might was oh. The man doesn't have the ball to call me himself it seems since he knows I would reject it. All Might said as the man didn't care much at all for Sir Night Eye after the day, he learned what the man did towards Izuku all of those years ago. No, the man that All Might knew was long gone. Sadly, Mirio Togata A.A. Lemillion will be a third year when Izuku is a first-year student and I want Izuku to have a provisional license and start getting experience under his belt. This way Sir Knight I doesn't have much room to complain about the successor of one for all since Izuku would already be out in the field performing. Nizu said and Izuku nodded his head since it only really benefited him. Izuka did ask who he was going to be doing his work study under and Nizu said it would be a joint work study of my agency, Death Star Agency, Nizu's agency, and working with Eraserhead who is an independent hero. Overall, you will be acting on your own for the most part due to All Might's time limit unless you do underground work with Eraserhead which you said you did want to do. You also wanted to build a name before you started to get associated with All Might in the public eye which this will help you do quicker. Niza said and then he asked Izuku if he had a hero name and everything decided yet or did he need time. Izuku thought it over and nodded his head since he indeed did have a name and slogan he wanted to use. I want to be the hero of valor, Raiden. Izuku declared and All Might smiled at that as it was a name of great courage. Oh, Raiden as in the Japanese mythology Thunder God interesting. That does play well with the lighting arcs that you put off and your overwhelming power. I can see it catching on quickly since you tend to appear with the mist and charge out of it which does look like lighting moving around. Approved. Nizu said as he wrote the information down and sent it off to the hero commission. The provisional license will arrive at the school in about a week. After that, we can get you out on the field as I already have your entire hero outfit made as you designed when we were all in the forest. If you want changes just let me or the support department know and we will update your official hero outfit. Nizu said and Izuku thanked him. Izuku then asked if Nizu had anything else he was hiding. Don't trust me do you? I wouldn't. Nizu said with an evil grin on his face and Izuku sighed as all might shivered. Indeed, it's time to start your education for your teaching certificate as you already completed your high school education about a month ago. After you get that done you will be completed with education unless you want to push for a college degree which I don't know how fast you can go through that before the year starts. Nizu said and Izuku thought it over and said he could likely get the first year level work completed before UA started up for him. Nizu nodded his head and said he would enroll him in an online university in Japan but the teaching certificate came before that so he needed to get it done. Niza told him it should only take him a month or two at max so he would have it far before UA started up which would make him able to teach classes with other staff. Izuku just shook his head at all of Niza's schemes but had to agree this was an efficient way to help stabilize Japan as All Might would need to start pulling back soon as his retirement was only getting closer. Do you know if Sir Night Eye has told Lumillion about the quirk or any other secrets that he shouldn't have since it's clear his lips are quite loose to strangers so it wouldn't be surprising if he speaks about it to those that he has employed. Izuku decided to ask and Nizu was silent but only sighed in the end. Without bugging his office and our own student there isn't a way to see if he has told anyone else legally. 
As such, we will continue to move under the assumption that he has likely told Lumillion even though it isn't his right to tell anyone. Nizu said and Izuku nodded his head and the meeting came to an end. All Might decided to take Izuku out for a meal since they haven't had much personal time together to just relax. Soon they arrived at a restaurant in Tokyo since they drove there because Izuku was going to stay the night in All Might's apartment at Mighty Towers before returning the next morning. The restaurant was one that Nizu recommended which had amazing food but also food that All Might could eat which his wounds and still enjoy himself. As such, they were sitting there and talking about how things are changing at a fast pace. To think I was when I ran away from home and survived on my own with the guidance of the past users. Now, I am sitting in one of the top restaurants in Tokyo with one of my father figures. I didn't honestly think I could get so lucky as I look back on how depressing my life was before now. Izuku said and All Might lightly smiled as he listened to Izuku spoke as they looked out the window since the restaurant was high up in a building. The view was quite amazing from the building and the sun had already set so the lights in the city were on. Indeed, many things have changed that we couldn't anticipate. I look forward to seeing you rise through the ranks because even though you will be doing some underground work it will be strong for you not to end up on the high ranks with the type of person you are. All Might said and Izuku smiled as a tear went down his eye. The future is one that is always changing MSTR. I will destroy whatever vision Sir Enitai saw that day to ensure that you are watching me rise through the ranks. Izuku declared to All Might who widened his eyes as Izuku made the declaration to destroy Sir Naitai's vision. Izuku has said it before but never has All Might felt so much determination and spirit in the words until now. I wonder if it's because I've seen what he can do since he defeated me once already up to now I only had the will to push through the vision to ensure Izuku was safe and cared for but now now I want Tio live. All Might thought as he heard Izuku's statement. All Might thanked him and promised to keep fighting to the very end with every breath he had. Indeed, this was the moment that All Might had truly made the full commitment to living without having other motives than to just simply live his life. At first, he stayed alive to find Izuku Midoriya and help train the boy but now he truly wanted to live just for the sake of living itself and he had to admit he felt so much bliss in knowing that fact. The bliss that he didn't realize he needed in his life up until that moment. All Might couldn't wait for the adventures that he would get to see his protege and son go on through his rise of the ranks because All Might knew he had an amazing time during his rise to fame and he hoped Izuku Yagi would have the same amount of fun as well. The fact that Izuku had decided to take Yagi on as his last name always did make All Might really happy as well and he honestly couldn't feel happier than right now.